The Mysterious Silbury Hill Incident Silbury Hill, situated in the county of Wiltshire, England, near Avebury, has long been associated with the extraordinary. Over time, it has garnered attention from enthusiasts and those captivated by the possibility of advanced life and supernatural phenomena. This notable hill, towering at an impressive height of 131 feet, was built by human hands, yet its purpose remains shrouded in mystery. Nevertheless, this enigma has not deterred people from speculating about its true nature, with some even positing that it possesses a mystical essence or conceals a hidden treasure within its ancient structure. The allure and intrigue surrounding Silbury Hill have grown exponentially, making it a fascinating subject for those who seek to delve into the realms of the unknown and expand their knowledge of the unexplained. In the summer of 2009, a police officer, who happened to be off duty at the time, was driving along the A4 road, which offers a decent view of the enigmatic Silbury Hill. It was early morning, just before dawn, when the officer's attention was drawn to what is commonly known as a crop circle. What caught the officer's curiosity was the fresh appearance of this particular crop circle, as if it had been recently formed. However, that was not the only unusual aspect of the scene. As the officer observed the mysterious crop circle, he noticed three exceptionally tall figures standing nearby. Cloaked in white garments, their faces hidden from view and adorned with long blonde hair, these figures piqued the officer's interest. At first, he dismissed them as investigators conducting a forensic examination. But as he approached, a distinct and bothersome buzzing sound reached his ears, impossible to ignore. Surprisingly, the figures seemed completely unfazed by this auditory disturbance. Undeterred, the officer ventured closer and even tried to communicate with the figures, calling out to them. However, his attempts went unnoticed. It was during this interaction, though, that the officer sensed something peculiar occurring within the boundaries of the crop circle. The strange buzzing emanated from within, and the crops within the circle swayed as if being moved by an invisible force, despite the absence of any noticeable wind in the surrounding atmosphere. This stark contrast, where everything outside the crop circle remained still, strongly suggested that something other than wind was responsible for the movement, perhaps an unidentified engine. Driven by curiosity, the officer mustered the courage to approach the figures, causing them to briefly turn their heads in his direction before vanishing into thin air with an uncanny, supernatural swiftness that made it impossible for him to keep up. The perplexing buzzing sound, however, persisted. Faced with this unnerving situation, the officer decided it was best to retreat to the safety of his vehicle, succumbing to a sudden wave of apprehension. The summer morning encounter along the A4 road left the officer astounded by the fresh crop circle, the enigmatic figures with their concealed faces, and the inexplicable buzzing sound resonating from within. It was an encounter marked by a sense of mystery and an eerie astonishment that lingered in the officer's mind, igniting a desire for answers to the puzzling phenomenon. In a scenario reminiscent of Shermer's case, the officer stationed at Silbury Hill underwent an agonizing headache that persisted throughout the entire day following his perplexing encounter. Filing a detailed report with his superiors, the officer's claims were not thoroughly investigated due to the fact that he was off duty during the incident. Despite the absence of any additional eyewitnesses, or at least no individuals who came forward, peculiarly enough, there were other intriguing accounts from individuals who had observed an anomalous, unmarked helicopter hovering precisely at the same location where the officer first spotted the crop circle. This peculiar helicopter remained stationary for an uninterrupted three-hour period before abruptly departing towards an unknown destination on the night following the officer's inexplicable experience. Although this correspondence is not an exact witness account, one can't help but question the likelihood of a mysterious and unmarked helicopter coincidentally appearing in the same vicinity. Is it merely an extraordinary coincidence, or a subtle confirmation of the officer's exceptional encounter? This intriguing series of events raises intriguing questions and adds an unprecedented layer of complexity to the story. The Mysterious Disappearances of Terence Williams and Felipe Santos The disappearances of Terence Williams and Felipe Santos are two cases that have baffled investigators and haunted their families for over a decade. These men, 
both young and full of promise, vanished under suspicious circumstances in Naples, Florida, in separate incidents involving the same former police officer, Steve Culkins. Terence Williams, a 27-year-old father of four, disappeared on January 12, 2004. According to witness accounts, Terence was last seen being stopped by Deputy Steve Culkins for driving without a license. Culkins claimed to have dropped Terence off at a nearby convenience store, but Terence was never seen again. The circumstances surrounding Terence's disappearance immediately raised questions. Friends and family described him as a responsible and caring father who would not willingly abandon his children. Calkins's account of the incident was inconsistent with witness statements and his actions became a focal point of the investigation. Less than three months before Terence's disappearance, on October 14, 2003, Felipe Santos, a 23-year-old Mexican immigrant, vanished under eerily similar circumstances. Like Terence, Felipe was stopped by Deputy Steve Calkins for driving without a license. Calkins claimed to have arrested Felipe and arranged for him to be transported to the county jail. However, there is no record of Felipe's arrival at the jail and he has never been located since. Felipe's family, distraught and desperate for answers, sought to uncover the truth about what happened to their son, and the similarities between the two cases raised suspicions that something sinister may have occurred at the hands of Deputy Calkins. The investigations into the disappearances of Terence Williams and Felipe Santos faced numerous challenges. Initially, there was limited evidence to corroborate the accounts provided by Deputy Calkins, and the absence of physical evidence made it difficult to establish foul play definitively. Moreover, the investigations were complicated by the reluctance of some law enforcement agencies to fully cooperate and disclose information. Some officials downplayed the significance of the cases contributing to the frustration and disillusionment of the victims' families. The families of Terence Williams and Felipe Santos have been instrumental in keeping their cases in the public eye, and through activism and advocacy efforts, they have fought to ensure that their loved ones are not forgotten and that justice is served. The support of community organizations and civil rights advocates has played a crucial role in bringing attention to these cases. Public pressure, fueled by widespread awareness campaigns and protests, has prompted renewed interest from law enforcement agencies. Despite the passage of time, the families of Terence Williams and Felipe Santos continue to search for answers. They remain determined to uncover the truth about what happened to their loved ones and to hold those responsible accountable for their actions. Recent developments, including the reopening of investigations and the issuance of subpoenas, suggest that progress is being made in these long-standing cases. The efforts of the victims' families and the tireless work of dedicated investigators have given hope that justice may finally be served. The Calvine Incident The Calvine UFO photo, also known as the picture taken near the town of Calvine in Scotland, has captivated and divided the UFO community for a significant period of time, making it one of the most fascinating and controversial pieces of evidence in the realm of potential extraterrestrial activity. Recently, there has been a revelation regarding the identity of the mysterious person behind the camera, reigniting the attention and curiosity surrounding this enigmatic image. This comprehensive exploration delves deep into the various aspects and implications of the Calvine photo, enriching our understanding of its significance and contributing to the ongoing discourse within the UFO community. According to the majority of references, it is widely accepted that the photograph was captured during the afternoon of August 4, 1990, specifically when two unidentified individuals were observed strolling in the direction of the town of Calvine. As the observers directed their gaze upwards while engaged in their previous activity, they were unexpectedly captivated by the presence of a conspicuous object resembling the shape of a diamond hovering above them. Upon making a cursory assessment, they approximated the dimensions of this peculiar vessel to be approximately 100 feet in diameter. Upon realizing that they had captured an exceptionally extraordinary event in the photographs, the individuals involved decided to approach a newspaper with the hope that their intriguing sighting would be published. However, to their surprise, the newspaper declined to run any story regarding their encounter. As a peculiar turn of events, the photographs ultimately ended up in the possession of the Ministry of Defense, 
raising even more questions about the significance of what had been captured. After the occurrence, the incident appeared to fade into obscurity, only regaining attention with the publication of a book by Nick Pope, a prominent UFO researcher from the United Kingdom. In this book, Pope recounts the incident and sheds new light on its significance. He reveals that the photographs taken during the incident were carefully examined by multiple individuals within the Ministry of Defense. It is claimed that these images served as compelling evidence and played a pivotal role in gradually shifting Pope's skepticism towards UFO sightings. The encounter prompted him to realize that there existed a deeper and more intriguing aspect to these phenomena than he had initially believed. In an unexpected turn of events, the situation took an even more peculiar twist. Suddenly, and without warning, an RAF tornado aircraft materialized out of nowhere, encircling the enigmatic object in question. Sensing the significance of this moment, one of the individuals swiftly reached for a camera they fortuitously carried and successfully captured a series of photographs, freezing the bizarre encounter in time. Astonishingly, in the blink of an eye, the mysterious entity swiftly ascended vertically, vanishing from sight with unfathomable velocity. This perplexing event left the observers in awe, bewildered by the inexplicable sequence of events that had just unfolded before their eyes. Even though the existence of the photograph had been known to the public since the mid-1990s through Pope's book, it wasn't until the early 2020s when Dr. David Clark conducted extensive research on the case that it regained widespread attention. Interestingly, Clark had actually interviewed Pope about the incident as early as 2001. Clark's thorough examination of the subject shed new light on the photograph, bringing it back to the forefront of public interest. This significant resurgence sparked renewed discussions and analysis, leading to a deeper understanding of the photograph and its implications. During their conversation, Pope would disclose to Clark that he had initially come across the photograph in a poster form during his tenure at the Ministry of Defense. According to Pope, it is worth mentioning that the picture in question had received significant attention and scrutiny from multiple individuals. It was widely perceived as a representation of a sturdy and well-constructed spacecraft, rather than being dismissed as a mere fabrication or trickery. To put it succinctly, within the Ministry of Defense, there existed a considerable belief, as voiced by Pope, that the picture indeed depicted a genuine phenomenon. This perspective was shared by many individuals within the ministry, suggesting a collective confidence in the authenticity of the image. The Pope then proceeded to disclose that in the aftermath, numerous individuals began to question the true nature of the object, raising suspicions that it might be an undisclosed, top-secret aircraft developed by the United States government under the classified project codenamed Aurora. It was during this period that Pope vividly remembered encountering a defensive mindset among those involved in handling these claims. In a fascinating turn of events, one of his superiors entered his office one day, swiftly removing the poster depicting the mysterious object from the wall and securely locking it away in a drawer, an action that left an indelible impression on Pope. Remarkably, as far as he was aware at the time of speaking in 2001, the poster's hidden residence within that very drawer likely persisted to this day, adding an intriguing layer of longevity to the enigma surrounding it. It is worth noting that in addition to his discussions with Clark, Pope revealed that he had made multiple attempts to inquire about the existence of a clandestine aircraft from American sources. Interestingly, the responses he received indicated that they did not possess such a secretive aircraft. However, they curiously directed their curiosity towards the British military questioning if they might have a similar aircraft to the one described by Pope. This exchange suggests that the Americans were also aware of reports relating to the existence of such an aircraft. The information provided by Pope sheds light on the international interest and intrigue surrounding this elusive aircraft. In January 2023, Matthew Ilsley, a member of Clark's research team, shared in an interview with the Falkirk Herald that he had successfully located the photograph they had been searching for. To their surprise, there was a name written on the back of the photograph. This significant discovery was made possible through the assistance of Craig Lindsay, a retired RAF officer, who had secretly held onto the photograph in his residence and later passed it on to Ilsley for further examination. The revelation of the name on the back of the photograph 
added a new layer of intrigue and possibilities to their investigation. In his article published in the Daily Mail, Clark claimed that upon seeing the photograph presented by Lindsay, he immediately recognized it as something extraordinary. He described the image as slightly blurry, giving the impression that it was captured in a moment of panic. However, Clark noted that this was in line with the witness's accounts, emphasizing that he is not easily swayed by unsubstantiated theories Clark confidently maintained that the depicted object is undoubtedly a structured craft of unknown origin. He stressed that its appearance is undeniably otherworldly, and unlike any conventional aircraft commonly known. By stating this, he aimed to establish the uniqueness and remarkable nature of the unidentified flying object captured in the photograph. Furthermore, it is worth noting that Clark can confirm the steps he took to ensure the authenticity of the photograph. To ascertain its validity, he sought the expertise of Andrew Robinson, a senior lecturer on photography at Sheffield Hallam University. The conclusions drawn by Robinson after analysing the photograph were conclusive, no tampering had taken place, thus affirming its genuineness. This raises an intriguing question. If the photograph were indeed a fake, what could explain the photographer's prolonged silence over a period of more than three decades? According to Clark, Robinson conveyed to him that the object was situated unmistakably in front of the camera and assured him that it was not a fabricated element created during post-production. This information provided by Robinson serves to confirm the authenticity of the object's presence in the footage. Lindsay affirms that he had the opportunity to meet the photographer more than 30 years ago, and from their initial interaction, it became evident to Lindsay that the young man was experiencing feelings of fear and unease due to the distressing event he had witnessed. Lindsay also observed that the photographer's demeanor and behavior indicated that he was not fabricating or inventing the incident in any way. In his conversation with Clark, he would express that as a press officer for the RAF in Scotland, he had encountered numerous reports of UFOs, although most of them proved to be mere sightings of peculiar lights. However, he would emphatically assert that the situation with the Calvine UFO photograph was distinct. Moreover, he would vividly recall that when the witness mentioned that the object was completely silent and emitted no noise whatsoever, he began to recognize the possibility that it could be something extraordinary. He would further elaborate that, based on his knowledge, there were no known aircraft that operated without producing any sound. This observation prompted him to consider the potential exceptional nature of the object in question. Lindsay took the initiative to share copies of the picture with various newspapers and also sent a faxed copy to the Ministry of Defence. From his memory, he recalled that the MOD promptly reached out to him, expressing their interest in obtaining more information about the sighting and inquiring if he still possessed the original negatives. When Pope visited the Ministry of Defence offices in London, he was surprised to discover that the photograph had been enlarged to a poster size and prominently displayed on the office wall. This detail highlights the significance and impact of the image within the ministry. In the end, Lindsay received instructions to refrain from pursuing any further investigation into the sighting and leave it in the hands of the authorities in London. Over the course of subsequent years, no further information or updates were received regarding the sighting. However, Lindsay held on to the original photograph, preserving it in a drawer at his residence. In conversations with Clark, Lindsay expressed his optimistic anticipation that the two individuals who had witnessed the event would eventually come forward and share their personal accounts. This hopeful expectation signifies Lindsay's desire for the truth to be revealed from first-hand experiences. In an effort to preserve the anonymity of the photographer, the person responsible for the photographs was intentionally kept unknown to the public. Ilsley, the spokesperson, explained that they had diligently undertaken the task of reaching out to as many individuals as possible who might possess information about the identity of the photographer in question. In March 2023, there was a disclosure that the photographer's identity had been uncovered and confirmed as Kevin Russell. It seems that Russell had been employed as a porter at the Pitlockery Hydro Hotel, located nearby, for a considerable number of years. However, according to reports, he supposedly left Pitlockry and returned to Glasgow during the early 1990s. This information sheds light on Russell's previous occupation and his possible movements during that period. 
Ilsley conducted extensive and thorough searches in an ardent effort to locate Russell. In this pursuit, she delved into various records and databases, unearthing information on approximately 300 individuals sharing the name Russell, who would now be in their 50s, solely within the borders of Scotland. The research further revealed an additional 150 individuals with the same name dispersed across other regions within the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada and Australia. Despite meticulously reaching out to each of these individuals, Ilsley's endeavours proved fruitless as none of them turned out to be the person she and her team were fervently seeking. Subsequently, the legal proceedings advanced further, when an unidentified individual, purporting to have been employed at the hotel during the same period as Russell, provided Ilsley with a photograph depicting the elusive person they were diligently seeking. This development added another layer of complexity and intrigue to the case, as the anonymous source's revelation opened up new possibilities for the investigation. The item under consideration could potentially be a cutting-edge, confidential military apparatus. Nevertheless, even if this supposition were accurate, it would inevitably raise additional inquiries regarding the specific types of vehicles that the armed forces of various nations, such as the United States, the United Kingdom, and potentially others globally, possess within their arsenals. Exploring this matter in depth, it is essential to delve into the comprehensive range of military vehicles at the disposal of these nations, uncovering a wealth of information that may enrich our understanding of their capabilities and strategic resources. Numerous researchers and aviation specialists have engaged in extensive speculation regarding the nature of the object captured in the Calvine UFO photograph. Specifically, they have questioned whether it could potentially be an aircraft associated with the highly secretive Aurora program. This enigmatic program, rumoured to have been operational since the early 1990s, allegedly involved a top-secret hypersonic aircraft conducting clandestine operations from United States air bases situated in Scotland. The speculation surrounding this photograph has prompted scholarly and expert discussions, delving into the precise connections between the photographed object and the Aurora program, thus adding another layer of intrigue to the ongoing mystery surrounding this intriguing phenomenon. It is indeed intriguing to note that despite the wealth of information available regarding the Calvine UFO photograph, there exists a significant number of individuals within the UFO community who refute its authenticity. Some argue that it is simply a reconnaissance aircraft belonging to the US military, while others strongly assert that it is nothing more than an elaborate hoax. It is frequently suggested that skeptics will only entertain the notion of extraterrestrial visitors when confronted with photographic evidence. However, even when such evidence does manifest, as is the case with the Calvine UFO picture, it is promptly dismissed as insufficient proof of anything extraordinary. This prevailing skepticism within the UFO community is a noteworthy aspect to consider. Despite the numerous debates surrounding the authenticity of the Calvine UFO photograph, opinions remain divided. There are those who adamantly reject its legitimacy, attributing it to covert military operations. Conversely, Skeptics dismiss it entirely as a fabrication, emphasizing the need for incontestable proof in order to be persuaded of the plausibility of advanced visitations. It is important to recognize the significance of differing perspectives within this discourse. Just what was the strange object witnessed over the town of Calvine that evening in the summer of 1990, and if there was nothing to the object, why does the military wish certain files connected to the case to remain classified until well into the 2070s? despite the 30-year rule on such information. Although the National Archives insist that only the names of those involved are subject to this rule, it is certainly an area for suspicion. We would, for example, suspect if the object was simply an experimental aircraft, details of it would be safe to enter the public arena 30 years later. The twists and turns that the Calvine UFO photograph and the events surrounding it have taken only go to show how murky the world of UFO research actually is. At the time of writing, the search is on, both for Russell and the other witness to the events, and if they do decide to come forward, the Calvine UFO photograph could indeed prove to be one of the most important pieces of evidence for UFO researchers in history. That it is as relevant today as it was when it was first taken over 30 years ago is without doubt. The Disappearance of Jordan Nebling 
Jordan Nebling, a 19-year-old individual, went missing in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina on the 10th of October in the year 2020. Her disappearance occurred following an incident where her car unexpectedly broke down near the vicinity of Old White Horse Road, as a result of which she required assistance. It was her ex-boyfriend who came to her aid and picked her up. Jordan Cheyenne Nebling, born on March 8, 2001, entered this world as a precious gift to her mother, Heidi Nebling. However, circumstances led her to grow up in the nurturing embrace of foster care. Yet, destiny had a different plan for Jordan, as she was later fortunate enough to find her forever home through adoption. Jordan, during her teenage years, had a troubling past. The circumstances surrounding her vanishing were unrelated to her previous struggles. Notably, Jordan had successfully embarked on a positive journey towards adulthood. She had recently secured a new job, which signified a positive change for her. She had a reputation for regularly visiting the scenic locations of Traveler's Rest and Marietta in South Carolina. On October 9, 2020, Jordan Nebling and a male companion embarked on a journey from Traveler's Rest to visit their acquaintances in the charming town of Cowpens, situated in South Carolina. It should be noted that Jordan and her friend were traveling in a car that was kindly loaned to them. On the date of October 10, 2020, Jordan made the decision to embark on a solo journey back to her hometown of Traveler's Rest. However, unforeseen circumstances arose when the vehicle she had borrowed unexpectedly experienced a breakdown right in front of a residential property situated on Old Whitehorse Road in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. In the afternoon, at approximately 1.30, Jordan Nebling was sighted for the last time near her residence. It was during this time that she was observed entering a vehicle belonging to an individual who had arrived to collect her. Regrettably, Jordan never made her way back home, and there has been a prolonged absence of any communication. On November 8, 2020, the stepmother of the individual took the proactive step of filing a report to the Greenville County Sheriff's Office, expressing concern and seeking assistance in locating the missing person. This action came about due to the stepmother's unsuccessful attempts to establish contact with Jordan. According to the authorities' findings, it was established that Jordan had made contact with her former romantic partner, Tyler Wilkins, who resided in the town of Traveler's Rest with the intention of seeking a ride from him. Tyler attested that he indeed drove Jordan to his residence. However, an altercation arose between them, resulting in Jordan opting to depart on foot independently. Jordan and Wylands were in a romantic relationship for a period of two years and even had a brief period of cohabitation when Jordan was just 17. It is worth mentioning that at the time, Tyler Wilkins, despite being associated with Jordan's disappearance, has not faced any charges related to any criminal activities. However, in a turn of events, Tyler Wilkins, who was previously in a relationship with Jordan, found himself arrested on November 10, 2022. This arrest came about due to his involvement in a series of crimes, including taking someone's life. Wilkins stands accused of allegedly imprisoning his partner within the confines of a residence belonging to a family member. Authorities have raised suspicions of foul play in the case of Jordan Nebling's disappearance, however. Despite a thorough investigation, no conclusive evidence of a crime has been uncovered. The exact details surrounding Jordan's disappearance continue to be shrouded in mystery, leaving her case classified as a missing person. Despite extensive investigations, her whereabouts remain unknown and the case remains unsolved. The Disappearance of Alexis Ware Alexis Ware, a 29-year-old woman, went missing in Anderson, South Carolina on January 30, 2022. Her disappearance occurred following a meeting with her former partner at a gas station. The circumstances surrounding her vanishing remain a matter of concern, leaving her friends and family worried. Alexis Ware, who resided in Greenville, South Carolina, went missing along with her two children. Her household consisted of a nine-year-old daughter and a two-year-old son. This disappearance case has garnered significant attention due to the circumstances surrounding her absence. Alexis, a skilled hairstylist, operated her own home studio where she catered to a loyal clientele. With a strong presence on social media, she aspired to venture into the realm of Instagram modeling, utilizing her creativity and expertise to showcase various hairstyles and fashion trends. Beyond her immediate goals, 
Alexis harbored long-term ambitions of establishing an exclusive boutique in the vibrant city of Atlanta, envisioning it as a stepping stone towards a better future for her family. Over the course of a leisurely weekend from January 29th to January 31st, 2022, Alexis Ware decided to take a break from her usual routine in Greenville, South Carolina. Eager to spend quality time with her loved ones, she embarked on a journey to her mother's residence. She expressed her feelings of anxiety and unease to her mother, recounting her experiences of being followed and receiving unwelcome calls from an unidentified individual whom she had nicknamed the Devil. These unnerving encounters had left her with a deep sense of fear, causing her to doubt whether she would even reach the milestone of her impending 30th birthday. In the early afternoon of January 30th, 2022, Sarah Ware bid farewell to her mother and embarked on her journey back to her hometown of Greenville. Three hours later, at precisely three in the afternoon, she engaged in a heartfelt conversation with her mother through the convenience of a video chat, during which she casually mentioned her intention to catch up on some much-needed rest. In the evening, at approximately seven, Ware made her way to the 7-Eleven store located on Highway 29 North in Anderson, South Carolina. Her intention was to meet TJ Patterson, the father of her youngest child. Upon arrival, she entrusted the care of their children to him, after which they departed the premises in their respective vehicles. Ware was originally intended to accompany Patterson to his mother's residence before returning to her own mother's abode. However, as per reports, at some juncture, she purportedly maneuvered her vehicle ahead of his at a red traffic signal and swiftly accelerated into the darkness of the night. In the evening, precisely at 7.30, Patterson took the initiative to reach out to Ware's mother and provided a detailed account of the events leading to their separation. Patterson expressed her concern by attempting to call her daughter's cell phone. However, her attempts were unsuccessful as the call directly diverted to her voicemail. Alexis Ware, a young woman with a promising future, mysteriously disappeared without a trace and did not make it back to her home. On the first day of February in the year 2022, the family of the individual in question took the step of submitting a report to the Anderson County Sheriff's Office, as they were unable to establish contact with her. In the evening of January 30th, 2022, there was a significant event related to Ware's cell phone. At precisely 8.15 in the evening, her cell phone sent a signal that indicated its location as Anderson, South Carolina. This important piece of information provided a starting point for further investigation. Furthermore, there were additional sightings of her car captured by surveillance cameras at an apartment complex in Anderson on multiple occasions throughout that night. In the late hours of that very evening, the surveillance cameras along the highway in Augusta, Georgia, approximately one hour's drive away, captured the presence of Ware's car. However, it remains uncertain as to whether Alexis Ware herself was behind the wheel of the vehicle during that particular moment in time. This raises questions about the identity of the individual who may have been operating the vehicle. On the 1st of February, 2022, the vehicle belonging to Ware, which was a red Honda Accord manufactured in the year 2019 and bearing a South Carolina license plate, was discovered abandoned and heavily coated in mud. This peculiar finding took place in a hunting field located in McCormick, South Carolina, approximately 30 miles to the south of Anderson, where lacked any companions or relatives in the vicinity of McCormick. Interestingly, her cell phone, purse and identification documents were discovered within the vehicle itself, indicating their undeniable presence. Furthermore, an assortment of garments was recovered from the trunk, suggesting possible intention for a change of attire. On a peculiar note, her hair bonnet was stumbled upon lying on the ground adjacent to the automobile. This collection of intriguing details raises profound questions and warrants further investigation into the circumstances surrounding Ware's situation in the McCormick area. In their investigative efforts, the police successfully obtained fingerprints from the vehicle in question. However, they have refrained from disclosing any information regarding the potential match between these prints and the individual suspected to be Ware or any other person involved in the case. T.J. Patterson, in his statement to the authorities, recounted that on January 30th, he departed for home after meeting with Alexis at the gas station. The following day, he proceeded to work as usual. 
As part of the investigation, surveillance footage from the gas station's parking lot was carefully examined, revealing no unusual activities or circumstances. This thorough analysis aimed to gain a comprehensive understanding of the events surrounding T.J. Patterson's activities during this time period and provide additional insights into the case. Currently, there have been no individuals identified as persons of interest in the case of Alexis's disappearance. However, the police have made it clear that they are actively investigating all potential leads and considering every possibility. In the investigation into Alexis Ware's disappearance, the police have thoroughly examined the case and have not come across any evidence, means or motives indicating foul play. The details surrounding the disappearance of Alexis Ware are shrouded in mystery, leaving investigators with little information to work with. At present, her whereabouts remain unknown and the case remains unsolved. Giant Monoliths at Baalbek In the modern city of Baalbek, Lebanon, are several massive monoliths known to be the largest in the world. Baalbek was under Roman rule for a period of time, in which it was referred to as Helipolis, or City of the Sun. The stones were cut and carved to be used for one of the grandest and largest temples to the Roman god Jupiter, known by the Greeks as Zeus. The temple features one of the most awe-inspiring megalithic foundations, consisting of 27 enormous limestone blocks. Three of the largest make up the base, and are known as the Trilithon, with each weighing at least 1,000 tons. Aside from those three, are two other monoliths, larger and heavier than the ones actually used for the temple. One of those was the Stone of the Pregnant Woman. The other is known as the Stone of the South and is even heavier. The Stone of the Pregnant Woman was first thought to be the largest monolith discovered. Analyses of the size and weight of the enormous monolith in Baalbek, Lebanon, by the German Archaeological Institute revealed that the megalithic block was one of the largest ever discovered. Its name comes from stories and legends that a pregnant woman tricked villagers into believing that she would be able to move it, if they fed her until she gave birth. Other stories say that the name comes from legends that pregnant jinn were assigned the task of cutting and moving the stones. There are even some who believe that a woman who touches the stone raises her chances at fertility. The blocks originated from a limestone quarry nearby. The monoliths are thought to date back at least 2,000 years, or to around 27 BC. Although they were probably intended to be used for a temple to Jupiter, these stones never made it to the building, laying at a distance of 900 meters away from the Heliopolis temple complex. Experts believe this is because they turned out to be too heavy to transport. Researchers also discovered later that a crack in the stone of the pregnant woman must have been the reason why it, specifically, was never transported. The stone of the south was discovered after the stone of the pregnant woman, as it rests underneath the latter and was mostly buried under a few feet of dirt. The stone of the south is now the largest known ever carved by human hands at 1,242 tons. These monoliths are thought to have probably been cut in the same way as the masonry used in the Pont de Garde, a Roman aqueduct in southern France. Each piece would have been split from a larger expanse of limestone along natural fissures. Because they would have been too heavy to lift, they were likely pulled using a capsan, like a human-driven winch, or using a sledge. Despite these stones being a possible disappointment to their carvers, as they turned out to be useless for the purposes of the temple, the Stone of the Pregnant Woman and the Stone of the South both set a world record for the biggest boulders ever discovered. It is incredible to imagine that people in the past, with their limited technologies and resources, were able to cut and carve such massive blocks of stone in order to raise temples and monuments. These discoveries and inventions all remain a testament to humans and their incredible abilities to create, innovate, and develop tools and creations that leave their marks. Although we may never have all the answers to how these monuments came about or what technologies were used to raise such profound monuments, we can be quite certain of the abilities and marksmanship of those who lived before us. 
Stephen Kubacki It's the winter of 1978 in the American Midwest, and Stephen Kubacki, a student from Hope College, is taking advantage of the last days of February before spring began to go skiing. He leaves his student digs to go on a solo cross-country skiing trip. Kubaki was an accomplished outdoorsman who climbed mountains in Europe and was an avid cross-country skier. Familiar with the area, this was an ordinary weekend pursuit for Kubaki and to those at college who knew him. However, this small excursion would end up being far from ordinary. Several days later, the alarm was raised when Kubaki failed to return from what should have been a day's activity. At the same time, snowmobilers on the southeastern shore of Lake Michigan had come across a set of abandoned skis and ski poles. The police knew immediately who they belonged to. A search party was sent out, utilizing both land and air rescue, with helicopters and locals deployed to find Stephen. Only two more things were subsequently discovered, Stephen's backpack and his footprints in the deep, frozen snow. There was something off about the scene, however. The backpack looked as if it had been abruptly thrown to the ground, and the heavy footprints disappeared into nothingness as if Kubaki had walked out of reality. Looking to close off the case with a sense of logic, police figured a more rational explanation. Close to the shores of frozen Lake Michigan, Stephen must have removed his skis and wandered too close to the water, falling through the ice and drowning into the watery depths below. His friends grieved, his family mourned, and life returned to normal as the months passed by. That is, until 15 months later, Stephen Kubiaki walked straight through the door of his family house over 500 miles away. Stephen told his recollection of events as best he could. That day, May 5th, 1979, he woke up on a grassy knoll in Massachusetts, some 700 miles due east from where he disappeared. He was wearing clothes that were not his had items such as maps and signs that were neither his nor written by him, and he had no concept of the amount of time that had passed. It was only when he was able to purchase a newspaper he would realise that he had re-emerged to consciousness 15 months later than when he first set off. The last thing he remembered before this was striding forwards on his skis as he made his way around Lake Michigan. Before he knew it, however, he experienced a momentary blip being enveloped in a cold and frozen darkness that hurried him from one point to another which felt like he was running. Aside from this, he had no other details to give, and yet the mystery of what happened that day in February 1978 was perhaps less about Kubaki and more about where he was. Urban myths run rife that Lake Michigan is home to cross-dimensional disappearances, essentially the Bermuda Triangle of the Great Lakes. It's not just Kubaki who went missing in this area. Ships, planes and other people have all disappeared and for whom there was never any trace of again. As of today, Kubaki's disappearance and reappearance remains a mystery. Joshua Maddox Joshua Maddox was a normal 18-year-old who lived in the Pike National Forest in Teller County, Colorado in 2008. He loved nature and hiking, so when he left to go on a walk one day, nobody thought anything of it until he failed to return that night. His disappearance sparked searches all over the area for months, hoping to uncover Josh safe and sound, or at least get some answers as to what might have happened to him. However, he was never found and continued to be listed as a missing person for years. In a seemingly unrelated course of events in 2015, a builder who owned an old, decaying cabin in the woods that had been abandoned for over 10 years decided to demolish it in order to begin developing the land that it stood on. Before demolition, the builder came out to check that everything was in order and entered the cabin for the first time in many years. He noticed a smell of rot and decay in the cabin but attributed it to the many animals who made the decrepit building their home in the intervening years. However, when demolition began, Starting with taking apart the chimney to reuse the bricks, workers were horrified to discover that there was a body of a young man inside the chimney, which was likely the source of the smell. The police and coroner were called to investigate and remove the body, and his dental records positively identified it as the body of Joshua Maddox. Maddox was found in a fetal position, with his legs curled up under his chest and his feet above his head. 
leading investigators to hypothesize that he might have gotten stuck in an attempt to enter the abandoned building and explore. Although the coroner agreed with this guess, as the autopsy did not reveal any trauma or suspicious substances and ruled the end of his life as accidental, there are those who disagree. For example, a heavy metal grate covering the chimney had disappeared and a heavy breakfast bar had been forcibly removed from the wall and dragged in front of the chimney to cover it. Additionally, many thought it was odd that Joshua would have voluntarily entered the chimney head first, and his clothing was found folded inside of the cabin next to the fireplace. He had only been wearing a thin thermal shirt when he entered the chimney. Despite several tip-offs and leads claiming that Joshua was finished off, the police were never able to determine what had actually happened, and the case remains a mystery to this day. The Mystery of Merian Lynn Carver In 2004, Merian Lynn Carver took a vacation cruise liner from Seattle, Washington to Vancouver, British Columbia. She boarded the ship on August 27th, but was last seen by her cabin attendant the next day. She never got off at any of the four stops along the way and did not board her return flight home to Boston, Massachusetts. She has been considered missing since then, despite years of her family searching for her. Carver was a 40-year-old single mother to one daughter. She had secretly booked a celebrity cruise trip for herself and left without telling any of her family members. Her father first reported her missing on September 7th, after her daughter called him asking for her mother's whereabouts. The police only realized she had left for a cruise after looking into her credit card records. The cruise line never reported her missing, despite constant memos from her attendant. He had noticed that her bed had not been slept in on the first night, but was ordered to ignore it and clean the room as usual. He submitted five notices to his supervisor about Carver's absence, but was told that someone else would handle it. The supervisor gathered Carver's belongings, but did not attempt to notify police or search for the missing passenger. The cruise line only reported Carver's disappearance after her father reached out to them. By then, the supervisor had already donated most of her possessions and only kept her purse and documents in storage. As per the cruise line's regulations, missing passengers must be reported, so celebrity cruises immediately fired this employee. Nonetheless, the cruise line was unhelpful in the search for Carver. They claimed her disappearance was most likely due to jumping overboard and did not attempt to investigate. It took nearly a month from her first disappearance for the family to learn that she had booked a cruise and an additional three days for the voyage to confirm that she was a passenger. Despite pleas from the father and personal investigators, celebrity crews barely helped in the investigation. They claimed to delete surveillance footage after a few days, even though they kept it for 30 days. When the father asked for it, they ended up accidentally deleting the footage. He ended up hiring private investigators to try and figure out what happened to his daughter, spending over the next few years nearly $75,000. Carver's father had so much frustration with the investigation and cruise line that he ended up suing the company over her disappearance and lack of action. He founded the International Cruise Victims Organization in 2006 and constantly lobbied Congress to enact laws and regulations to hold cruise ships responsible for accidents and loss of life. He became the leading campaigner for cruise ship safety, initiating the Cruise Vessel Security and Safety Act of 2010. He was even awarded the Ronald Wilson Reagan Public Policy Award from the US Department of Justice in 2017 for his work. Despite all of his hard work and dedication to the safety of cruise ship passengers, he never learned the truth of what happened to his daughter. Carver's father died in December 2019 at 83 years old, with her case still unsolved. The Lost Ark of the Covenant As the Israelites were making their way across the Sinai Desert after their departure from Egypt, Moses, with strict orders from God himself, commanded them to construct the infamous Ark of the Covenant. Inside the Ark is home to numerous tablets engraved with the Ten Commandments from the Hebrew Bible that are believed to host magical powers, both good and evil. The tablets are believed to be made of gold from the Garden of Eden, representing the morality of the universe. Like any biblical story, the truth of the matter is up to interpretation. Scholars who have studied the lost Ark of the Covenant 
have debated whether the Ark is made of gold or wood or both, what kind of powers it has, and ultimately where it ended up after vanishing from Jerusalem in 587 BC. God gave the Israelites extremely specific instructions for building the Ark of the Covenant. According to God, the Ark should be made of both wood and gold. However, the wood must be acacia wood that is 3.75 feet long and 2.25 feet wide. God then instructed the builders to sheath the wood with gold both inside and out. There was to be a cherub facing a certain direction on the lid of the chest, with its wings spread upward casting a shadow below. To imagine that Israelites wandering through the desert for 40 years were expected to create such an artistic masterpiece with only their hands and some gold is a huge undertaking, even with God's guidance. To make this story more believable to modern people, it is now believed that God chose only one man to be the designer of the ark and gifted him the skills he would need to complete the task. One of the most popular theories is that the Israelites used the ark to gain advantages on their way to conquer Canaan after their extended journey through the desert. According to the Hebrew Bible, the ark had the ability to stop water from flowing in the Jordan River so that the founders of the ark could carry it across. It is also believed to have helped the Israelites in various battles on their way across the desert. Because the ark was thought to be so powerful and had brought the Israelites such good fortune, it became a hot commodity. It was eventually stolen from the Israelites, but shortly thereafter, the thieves were swept with disease and fatal illnesses, causing them to return to the ark immediately. Once the Israelites had reached Shiloh, the ark was taken by King David and given to Solomon to be brought to Jerusalem where it would stay in the temple. Roughly 2,000 years ago, the ark disappeared once again. Scholars predict that the ark was stolen for its supposed powers and is now hidden in Ethiopia at the St. Mary of Zion Cathedral. The cathedral has a monk called the Guardian, who is the only person allowed to see the ark. There has been no authentication of the ark to determine if it is the original from the Bible stories. Other theories run rampant about the true location of the artifact. The Book of Maccabees states that the ark is hidden in a cave in Mount Nebo, and will remain unfound until called upon by God. At that point, we will know that God is giving us mercy because of the prolific powers that the ark holds for human beings. Still, there is always discussion about the ark being revealed only when the Messiah comes to earth to rescue his people. And finally, the ark is also believed to reveal itself only in the final days in the existence of the universe. MV Joyita The almost unsinkable MV Joyita was found in poor condition and drifting near Fiji five weeks after it disappeared. It was partially submerged, but it wasn't sunk. However, by the time it was discovered, its 25 crew and passengers were all long gone with the cargo and three life rafts. If you were one of the passengers, knowing that the ship you are on has a very strong structure, would you have risked sailing on a life raft in an open sea at night instead of staying aboard? The logical answer would be a resounding no, but what exactly happened that night, nobody knows. It all started on October 3rd, 1955. MV Joyita left Apia Harbour in Samoa bound for the Tekelau Islands, which is about 270 miles away. It was originally scheduled to leave the day before, but it had an issue with its port engine clutch. It eventually sailed the next day running on only one engine. It had 16 crew members and 9 passengers, including one doctor. MV Joyita was expected to reach Tekelau in no more than 48 hours. It was supposed to arrive on October 5, 1955. It was already a day overdue when the port of Fakaufa reported that MV Joyita never made it. No distress signal was received from the crew which left everyone with no clues as to what happened. A search and rescue team were sent the same day and for a whole week they tried to find answers, but they came back with nothing. It wasn't until November 10, 1955, when the captain of another merchant ship sighted MV Joyita drifting 600 miles off its course. It was found slightly submerged and empty. All its passengers and more than four tons of cargo were all gone. Based on the remaining fuel, the ship made it about 243 miles on its course before the engine failed due to a pipe leak in the engine cooling system. The radio system was found to have been functioning, but only had a reach of two miles. 
even if the ship had sent a distress signal, it would never have been received. However, this could have been easily fixed by one of the members of the crew. These findings create a deeper mystery surrounding the real events that happened that night. For decades, numerous theories have been suggested, but today we are going to focus on the two most controversial ones. The first theory accuses the Japanese forces of having kidnapped and killed the passengers of MV Joyita. The year 1955 was still around the time when Japanese forces were to blame concerning any sea vessel disappearances in this area. The MV Joyita might have witnessed something that they shouldn't have, which made them a target of a Japanese group. This would also explain the missing cargo as it could have been transferred to another ship. The second theory has something to do with Captain Thomas H. Miller, the captain of MV Joyita. He knew that the ship was sturdy and could at least keep them all safe until the daytime. However, the evidence found on the recovered ghost ship proves that the passengers left at night. According to a close friend of the captain, knowing him, he would have never left the ship even if it cost him his life, and yet the captain was gone along with the rest of the people aboard. One of the most logical explanations for this could be that the captain was injured or somehow incapacitated. This theory has gained credence following the discovery of blood-stained bandages on the ship. The Many Ghost Sightings at Ye Olde Man and Scythe Most hauntings, especially repeated sightings or spooky occurrences, revolve around a location with a history of loss of life, sickness or a vengeful owner. Ye Olde Man and Scythe in Bolton, England, has a little bit of each of these qualifications, making it a prime candidate for the paranormal. It is one of the oldest pubs in Great Britain, dating back to at least 1251, making it almost 800 years old. The location has seen its fair share of ghosts and hauntings. It was rebuilt and has changed hands throughout the centuries. However, its most famous owner was likely the family of James Stanley, 7th Earl of Derby in the 1600s. James Stanley was complicit in the siege of Bolton, which resulted in more than 1,000 residents being slaughtered in what came to be known as the Bolton Massacre. Stanley fled the area but was captured seven years later in the Battle of Worcester and was brought back to the still angry residents of Bolton and faced losing his life due to his crimes. He was allowed to stay in the prayer room of his family pub in the hours before his execution as he awaited his fate. He was beheaded just outside the pub in the Market Square on October 15, 1651, and it is said that he still haunts the cellar of Ye Olde Man and Scythe to this day. The chair that he supposedly sat in as he awaited his final moments is still inside the pub, adding to circulating rumours of Stanley's ghost haunting the premises. Although Stanley is the most famous ghost suspected of lingering on the premises, there is a long history of hauntings at the location. One set of paranormal experts recorded multiple voices with their ghost hunting equipment. Several amateur ghost hunters, as well as closed circuit security footage, have also caught unsuspecting spirits lingering in doorways and around the property. In one instance, the owner of the property came in to open the pub and noticed that a single glass had been smashed on the floor. Suspicious, he went to check the security footage and found that the feed had inexplicably stopped at 6.18am. The last thing visible on the video was a strange, ghostly figure appearing out of nowhere, which some believe to be Stanley himself. The owners of the pub have claimed that at least 25 restless spirits currently wander the property, among them a woman who is said to have hanged herself in the cellar several centuries ago, a small girl and a phantom dog. Although many say the security footage was an easily pulled off hoax, there is no doubt that the long history of battles, murders and illnesses that the pub has lived through could mean that several ghosts still linger on the property, haunting visitors. Artificial intelligence could not crack the code. In 2018, artificial intelligence endeavoured to figure out the 600-year-old code, though even the AI could not reliably figure out what this code said. 
The Voynich manuscript appears to contain between 25 and 30 characters, as interpretations have been varied and is written from left to right by a single hand. It is made up of 102 parchment folios, meaning it reaches approximately an astounding 234 pages in length. This objective information is minimal and does not necessarily aid in solving the mystery as to the original language the manuscript was written in. The manuscript is written in an unidentified language, using an alphabet that has not been seen elsewhere prior to the manuscript's discovery or after it was found. Many believe it has been written using a substitution cipher. This involves the letters of an existing language being exchanged for made-up letters to create a code. Typically, a substitution cipher is considered the simplest code, and is one of the oldest methods of encrypting a text. If it really is such a simple code, then why haven't scientists been able to translate the manuscript? Scientists have no idea what the original language is to begin figuring out where the substitutions have been made. Bradley Hauer and Gregor Kondrak aimed to use computational analysis in order to find a country the text may have originated from or a language it was written in. Numerous algorithms were trained to pick up the statistical fingerprints of the text and compare it to existing established languages to attempt to find a match. Factors such as the frequency of each letter and combinations of letters were used. Hauer and Kondrak began using this software on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. They input 380 languages. This trial appeared to work and be successful, so they moved forward with their research. A computational linguist at Illinois Institute of Technology stated that the results were in debate, but not more so than many other results often published in the scientific literature. The next step in their artificial intelligence testing and research was for Kondrak and Hauer to apply these algorithms to the infamous Voynich manuscript. But this was where the pair began to encounter numerous issues. The initial obstacle is that the algorithm was trained to trace modern languages. The evolution of languages regarding vocabulary, grammar, syntax and spelling is massive and so languages we use today are incredibly different to the same languages in the late medieval or early modern societies which is when the manuscript was traced back to in the 15th century. Another problematic element of the AI research is that while suggestions are made for the closest matches, the probability of this being a match is not considered. Kondrak and Hauer claimed to have discovered the source language, Hebrew, through their algorithm. However, this was the closest match of the 380 languages they inputted, but was not a certain match. Other matches that were considered close, for example Malay, are drastically different from Hebrew, and so the validity of this algorithm may be deemed very low. The lack of evaluation regarding how likely each language is means that Hebrew may have been the closest match available, but not necessarily similar enough to the source language for a substitution code. The final hurdle, and perhaps the factor that is a deal-breaker in the validity of their research, is that Kondrak and Hauer suggested the Voynich manuscript is written using not only a substitution cipher, but that it was also written in anagrams, having the letters within each word jumbled up too. Whilst this has been suggested before, it is certainly not a proven fact, just a theory. Kondrak and Hauer used Google Translate, which has a reputation for forcing nonsensical words and phrases into coherent fluent sentences. Despite all the indicators that their work should be and would be disregarded, Kondrak and Hauer claimed the first sentence of the Voynich manuscript to be as follows. She made recommendations to the priest, man of the house, and me and people. The sensationalist media headlines stated that the Voynich manuscript had been deciphered and translated. And while we may have been drawn closer, the flawed methodology of Kondrak and Hauer's work means the translation holds little weight. Maybe future artificial intelligence can solve this mystery, but for now, we still don't know. The mysterious plants, codes and astronomical signs that feature in the book. Perhaps even more puzzling than the mysterious Voynich language appears to be written in are the bizarre illustrations, doodles and diagrams that accompany the unknown writing. Images included in the manuscript depict strange plants, astrological diagrams, castles, dragons and perhaps the most puzzling image, an unclothed woman 
in what appears to be a bath. While some outlandish theories suggest ancient water park designs, others suggest medicinal information or even alien technology. One theory posed by Dr. Cheshire, a linguist at Bristol University, suggested it was a manual covering relationships and parenting, written in a code based off of a proto-romantic language. Dr. Cheshire believes it aligns with the Catholic and Roman pagan beliefs held by many Mediterranean Europeans in the 15th century. Dr. Cheshire states that he believed the Voynich manuscript was written by Dominican nuns. Bristol University commented, following media coverage, concerns have been raised about the validity of this research, and went on to ensure it is known that Dr. Cheshire's work is not affiliated with the university. However, perhaps the most common guess is that the Voynich manuscript details medical information. Medicine in the early modern and medieval periods contained lots of myths. Herbal remedies were common, explaining the plant diagrams, and many believed there was a correlation between the position of the stars and individuals' health, hence zodiac images being included. Furthermore, a bath was thought to cure many illnesses, explaining the image of the unclothed woman bathing. This suggests that health and medicine is a common factor between a fair few of the illustrations in the Voynich manuscript. The medicinal theory has been suggested by many, one of whom is historian Nicholas Gibbs in 2017. He offered the suggestion that the images centred health for the reasons just mentioned, but also that the manuscript was a pseudoscientific women's health manual. He, like many others, claimed to have solved the code, and believed the absurdly complex codes were Latin abbreviations, and that the Voynich manuscript was written in common shorthand that would have been understood in the 15th century, and was not code that needed to be broken. His work was heavily criticised and ultimately discredited because Nicholas Gibbs either reiterated ideas people before him had suggested and his own theories, the translated sentences, made little to no grammatical sense in Latin. The dismissal of Nicholas Gibbs's research ultimately means the contents of the Voynich manuscript remain a mystery. But the bizarre images seem to have an underlying theme. The Voynich manuscript appears to be split into seven distinct sections botanical, containing imagery of herbs and plants, astronomical, with pictures such as the sun, moon and stars, cosmological, illustrated with circular geometric designs, the zodiac section, containing drawings of the zodiac signs, biological, which has depictions of unclothed women in various baths, pharmaceutical, with images of containers and herbs side by side. And finally, the recipe section, which contains no illustrations, merely lines of text with stars in the margin. These theories are simply based upon where certain images lie within the text. As of today, the manuscript remains a mystery. The more time that passes, the more speculation and rumours continue to grow, and every few years we can be sure someone new will step forward, announcing that they have found a new translation. But, with so many experts eager to add to the research, such claims are often quickly refuted. Great minds are puzzled by the nature of the Voynich manuscript. The Cold War saw the involvement of the FBI, fearing it was a coded form of communist propaganda, and still no solution or understanding was found. Will we ever figure out this impossible code? Arguably the world's most mysterious book, allegedly figured out over and over, and still nobody can read it. Linguists, historians and cryptographers have puzzled over it for centuries and will continue to do so until we solve this mystery. What lies within the Voynich Manuscript? Someone by the name of Nalani posted a strange photograph on social media, claiming that it was captured during the Hawaii wildfires. Since the fires have started, various theories have been put forward to explain what happened. Deep within the confines of a forest in Hawaii, a local was able to capture a mysterious photograph. Those who saw the image said that the beam can be seen hitting the forest. Part of the forest can be seen emitting large amounts of smoke, and it was at this point that locals started to move away from the area. Oddly enough, the individual who took the photograph said that it wasn't until they viewed their photo album that they noticed the strange laser-like formation. 
It's important to note that this isn't the first time that these mysterious objects have been seen, and as of right now, a variety of different explanations have been put forward to explain what they are. Some have said that they are natural phenomena, and that this happens during natural weather changes. Others went down a different path and suggested that the beam is man-made. According to military officials, these energy beams do exist, but said that they are not used within these environments, and further detail that they are called energy weapons, and they operate on the principle of concentrating electromagnetic energy and delivering it to a target. Unlike traditional kinetic weapons that rely on projectiles, this new weaponry emits focused beams of energy that can travel at the speed of light, enabling almost instantaneous target engagement. These energy weapons offer a range of applications across various domains, including military, space, and civilian sectors. In the military realm, these provide advantages such as precision targeting, reduced collateral damage, and a virtually unlimited ammunition supply, as they rely on energy sources like electricity rather than physical munitions. However, those who have seen the photograph have said that there's no reason why this would be used in such an area. Some have suggested that it could have been a fire tornado. Fire tornadoes, also known as fire whirls, are a captivating meteorological phenomenon that marries the destructive force of fire with the mesmerizing spirals of a tornado. These unique occurrences are not only awe-inspiring but also serve as a testament to the intricate interplay of atmospheric conditions, fire behavior, and fluid dynamics. Fire tornadoes, although rare, have been documented in various parts of the world, where conditions are conducive to their formation. They typically arise in the midst of large wildfires or intense industrial fires, where the combination of intense heat, convective currents, and turbulent winds creates the ideal environment for their genesis. The interaction between the heat of the fire and the surrounding cool air triggers an updraft, setting the stage for the development of a fire tornado. The basic formation of a fire tornado involves a rising column of hot, buoyant air that twists and spirals due to the influence of crosswinds. As the fire generates intense heat, it heats the surrounding air, causing it to rise rapidly. This hot air column begins to rotate due to the Coriolis effect, caused by the Earth's rotation and the interaction with the inflowing cooler air. This rotation becomes more pronounced as the fire's heat and intensity increase, leading to the characteristic swirling motion that defines a fire tornado. The mechanics behind fire tornadoes are rooted in the principles of fluid dynamics and convection. The rising column of hot air behaves like a vortex, drawing in additional air from its surroundings. This inflow of air intensifies the rotation, creating a self-sustaining cycle. As the fire tornado gains strength, it can develop into a complex and dynamic structure, with multiple vortices forming within the main whirl. According to the latest update on August 14th, the number of fatalities resulting from the wildfires has risen to 96, solidifying these wildfires' status as the most lethal in modern history. As of Saturday, authorities have cautioned that the search and identification process for the victims is still in its initial phases. Despite the dedicated efforts of search teams, they have only covered a mere 3% of the extensive search area. It is crucial to note that this ongoing operation is complex and requires meticulous attention to detail. On Sunday, Hawaii Island experienced the occurrence of not one, but two small earthquakes near the vicinity of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Based on information from the U.S. Geological Survey, two relatively minor earthquakes with a magnitude of 2.6 each were recorded. These seismic events took place in the vicinity of Volcano Town, specifically 5.3 miles west-northwest of the area. A second earthquake, measuring 4.3 on the magnitude scale, struck at 1 in the afternoon. The earthquake originated approximately 5 miles south-southeast of Volcano, within the well-known Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. According to recent reports, the initial data released by the United States Geological Survey indicated three separate earthquakes. However, upon closer examination, it was discovered that the second and third quakes occurred just five seconds apart and are now considered to be part of the same seismic event. This observation has prompted a reconsideration of the initial findings. According to the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, there is currently no imminent threat of a tsunami. 
Hawaii is a place that has experienced wildfires on multiple occasions, but the recent ones that have occurred over the past few days are being labelled as some of the most severe in the history of the archipelago. The toll taken by these fires has been absolutely devastating, and while the exact cause is still being investigated, their impact has been far-reaching and profound. The combination of hurricane-force winds and arid conditions played a significant role in intensifying the wildfires. The occurrence of drought or abnormally dry conditions has significantly impacted vast regions of Hawaii, with particular focus on the entirety of Maui Island. This phenomenon has played a substantial role in the prevailing situation. According to the US Drought Monitor, approximately 14% of the state is currently experiencing either severe or moderate drought conditions. Furthermore, a staggering 80% of Hawaii is classified as being abnormally dry. This means that a significant portion of the state is facing a shortage of water, which can have detrimental effects. Dry weather conditions have the detrimental effect of sapping the moisture from plant life, thereby rendering it more susceptible to ignition and subsequent propagation of fire. Scientists have conducted extensive calculations and determined that a significant decrease in rainfall has occurred in approximately 90% of the Hawaiian islands when compared to the levels recorded a hundred years ago. In the ancient city of Jerusalem, where history and spirituality intertwine, a profound event was about to unfold, one that would ignite curiosity and wonder across the world. It was a tranquil day, with the golden sun lighting up the ancient walls. Amidst the sunlight, a small group of friends sat atop a rooftop terrace, savouring the view of the Dome of the Rock, an iconic symbol of the city's rich religious heritage. Among them was a young archaeologist with an insatiable thirst for uncovering ancient mysteries. He had come to Jerusalem, drawn by the allure of its history and the echoes of stories whispered by the ancient stones. As the friends chatted and laughed, their attention was suddenly drawn to a peculiar light in the sky. It glowed with an otherworldly luminescence, emanating from what appeared to be a cross-shaped object hovering silently over the dome of the rock. The group fell into a stunned silence as they gazed at the enigmatic sight above them. One of the friends questioned whether it was a drone or some sort of new aircraft, but it was clear to everyone that this was no ordinary aircraft. The object seemed to be suspended effortlessly in the air, its four arms extending symmetrically like a celestial cross. The light it emitted was mesmerizing, casting an ethereal glow upon the ancient architecture below. One of the friends reached for his camera and began capturing the event. He knew this was an extraordinary sight, one that only comes around once in a lifetime. As he focused his lens on the enigmatic object, he couldn't shake the feeling that this was not a mere coincidence. There was a sense of purpose in the way the object hovered above the dome of the rock, as if it carried a message from the heavens. The man said that the cross-shaped object hovering above Jerusalem left all of them in awe, causing them to question the object's origins. The fact this cross was seen in the holy city made some of them question whether this was a divine encounter. Interestingly enough, throughout human history, across various cultures and religions, Individuals have reported profound encounters with the divine. These experiences, often described as mystical or spiritual, transcend the boundaries of the physical world, leaving lasting impressions on the lives of those who undergo them. Divine encounters refer to extraordinary experiences in which individuals claim to have interacted with a higher power, deity, or spiritual presence. These encounters often occur in moments of prayer, meditation, fasting, or during religious ceremonies. Accounts of divine encounters are deeply personal and subjective, yet they often carry a profound sense of spiritual awakening and enlightenment. Divine encounters manifest in various forms, each reflecting the cultural and religious context in which they occur. Some individuals report seeing visions or hearing celestial voices, while others describe a deep sense of unity and connection with the divine. Some encounters result in a heightened state of consciousness, leading to insights and revelations about the nature of reality and existence. As of right now, the friends that encountered the glowing cross above the Dome of the Rock were left with more questions than answers. However, some of the friends noted that they felt complete peace 
while looking at the object, and said that this encounter changed their outlook on life. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time that a mysterious cross-shaped object has been witnessed. The skies have long been a canvas for mysterious sightings, from unidentified objects to unexplained aerial phenomena. Among the myriad of reports, one intriguing and lesser-known category is cross-shaped objects. Witnesses have described these enigmatic objects as having a distinct cross-like structure. While conventional sightings often describe disc-shaped or triangular objects, accounts of cross-shaped objects represent a unique anomaly. Witnesses report seeing objects that appear to have a central body or hub with four elongated arms radiating outwards, forming a cross-like configuration. These sightings have occurred in various parts of the world, and they share common features, such as their apparent ability to maneuver silently and with remarkable agility. Witnesses also often describe these cross-shaped objects as glowing or emitting various colors of light. Cross-shaped sightings are not a recent phenomenon. Historical records reveal accounts of similar objects witnessed in the skies centuries ago. For example, in ancient texts and religious scriptures, there are references to celestial beings or divine vehicles with cross-like attributes. These accounts have sparked speculation about possible connections between modern sightings and ancient encounters. The modern era has seen its share of cross-shaped objects reported by credible witnesses, including pilots, military personnel, and civilians. These sightings have been documented by governments, aviation authorities, and research organizations. One noteworthy example is the 1990 sighting in Belgium, where multiple witnesses reported a large cross-shaped object hovering silently in the sky. The incident was investigated by the Belgian military and garnered significant media attention, sparking public interest in cross-shaped objects. As with most sightings, theories attempting to explain these cross-shaped objects vary widely. Skeptics argue that these sightings could be the result of misidentifications of natural phenomena, such as meteors, aircraft or conventional drones. However, many witnesses maintain that the objects they saw behaved in ways inconsistent with conventional aircraft or natural phenomena. Some researchers propose more exotic explanations, including advanced military technology, experimental aircraft, or even extraterrestrial visitation. One prevailing theory is that these cross-shaped objects could be secret military aircraft or advanced experimental vehicles. Governments worldwide invest heavily in classified defense projects, and the existence of cutting-edge technology often remains hidden from the public. It is possible that some sightings are, in fact, experimental aircraft undergoing test flights. Such secrecy surrounding military projects could explain the lack of official acknowledgement or detailed public information about these sightings. The advanced hypothesis remains a captivating and controversial theory surrounding these sightings, including those of cross-shaped objects. Advocates of this hypothesis argue that some unidentified objects are piloted by intelligent beings from other planets or dimensions, visiting Earth for various purposes. The distinct shape and behavior of these cross-shaped objects, according to proponents of this hypothesis, suggest advanced propulsion systems and technology beyond our current understanding. They point to similarities between these sightings and those described in ancient texts, suggesting possible connections between historical accounts and modern encounters. The term unexplained aerial phenomena has gained traction in recent years as a more scientifically neutral alternative to unidentified flying objects. UAP refers to unidentified objects or phenomena observed in the sky that do not have an immediately apparent conventional explanation. Cross-shaped sightings fall under the UAP category, as they remain unexplained by conventional means. Unidentified objects have captured the world's imagination for decades, and sightings of these enigmatic aerial phenomena have been reported in various locations across the globe. Among the most intriguing and well-documented sightings are those that occurred above Jerusalem, the ancient and holy city that holds immense significance for three major world religions. One of the most notable and widely discussed incidents in Jerusalem is the mysterious glowing objects that have been seen all throughout the area. There isn't one specific incident, as travelers and locals have reported seeing these mysterious objects for several decades now. 
Several eyewitnesses have reported seeing bright lights descending over the Dome of the Rock, a revered Islamic shrine in the heart of Jerusalem's old city. The lights are said to hover briefly before shooting upwards at high speed, disappearing into the night sky. Witnesses who saw the event claim that these objects are genuine and claimed that they saw the incident with their own eyes. Witnesses described them as a glowing orb-like object, emitting a powerful light. Some reported seeing multiple orbs moving in unusual patterns before the main light took off. The Jerusalem incident was not the first reported sighting in the city. There have been other accounts of unidentified objects in the skies above Jerusalem throughout history. Some historians suggest that ancient texts and religious scriptures may contain references to celestial events or beings that could be interpreted as unidentified objects. The Jerusalem incident took place in a city deeply rooted in religious history and symbolism. Consequently, these mysterious sightings above the Dome of the Rock generated intense discussions about the possible theological implications of unidentified objects. Some interpreted the event as a sign from a higher power or a message to humanity. Others viewed it as a reflection of humanity's fascination with the unknown and a reminder of the vastness of the universe. As with many sightings, theories attempting to explain the Jerusalem incident span a wide spectrum. Skeptics propose conventional explanations, such as drones, helicopters, or Chinese lanterns, which are often released during celebrations and can resemble glowing orbs from a distance. The lack of radar evidence or official confirmation from aviation authorities has led some to question the authenticity of the incident. However, proponents of the unidentified object hypothesis point to the consistency of multiple witness accounts and the peculiar flight pattern as evidence supporting the existence of an unidentified object. Despite investigations and analyses, the Jerusalem incident remains an unresolved mystery. Skeptics and believers alike continue to debate its nature and authenticity, illustrating the enduring fascination and allure of unidentified object sightings. The lack of definitive answers regarding the origin and intent of the object allows room for speculation and contemplation. The Jerusalem incident serves as a reminder of humanity's enduring curiosity about the cosmos and the possibility of encountering other intelligent life beyond Earth. The Bible, one of the most revered and influential texts in human history, is rich with stories of divine encounters, celestial phenomena, and awe-inspiring events. Throughout the millennia, scholars, theologians, and enthusiasts have explored various interpretations of these biblical accounts. Among the intriguing possibilities, are theories that some of these events could be perceived as early unidentified object sightings. The Nativity story in the Gospel of Matthew recounts the appearance of a mysterious star that guided the three wise men to the birthplace of Jesus Christ. The star's behavior, including its ability to move, stop, and guide the wise men, has sparked speculation about whether it was a celestial object or an unidentified object. Some researchers suggest that the star of Bethlehem may have been an unidentified object, attributing its unique characteristics to advanced technology. They propose that advanced beings could have used the object to signal or guide the Magi to witness the birth of Jesus. The book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament contains a vision of a wheel within a wheel that the prophet Ezekiel witnessed in the sky. The description of the object, with its appearance of glowing metal and spinning wheels, has led some researchers to interpret it as an unidentified object sighting. Researchers propose that Ezekiel's vision may have been an encounter with an advanced aircraft. They point to similarities between Ezekiel's description and modern accounts, suggesting that the prophet may have witnessed advanced technology beyond his comprehension. Interpreting biblical events as mysterious sightings is a thought-provoking area of study. While mainstream biblical scholarship tends to interpret these events in a religious or metaphorical context, some enthusiasts propose alternative explanations. They suggest that advanced technology or advanced encounters could account for some of the extraordinary events described in the Bible. It is essential to recognize that these interpretations exist alongside diverse perspectives on the Bible's meaning and significance. They add another layer of complexity to the already multifaceted tapestry of human interpretations of sacred texts. The intersection of ancient religious texts raises compelling questions about the mysteries of the universe 
and the possibility of encountering intelligent life beyond Earth. Whether one embraces these interpretations as a plausible explanation or approaches them with skepticism, they offer a fascinating glimpse into the ways in which human curiosity and imagination continue to engage with ancient mysteries and the enigmatic realm of unidentified objects. Edward Snowden has issued a cautionary statement about the current state of surveillance technology, emphasizing how it has significantly advanced and become more invasive compared to the technology employed by US and British intelligence agencies that he exposed in 2013. He suggests that the surveillance capabilities available today surpass the level of sophistication witnessed back then, rendering those previous methods appear trivial. During an interview that marked the 10th anniversary of his groundbreaking revelations regarding the extensive surveillance activities conducted by the US National Security Agency and its British equivalent, the whistleblower expressed a sense of satisfaction and conveyed that he had no remorse for his actions. He highlighted the positive transformations that have occurred as a result of his disclosures. This comprehensive discussion explored not only the scale of the surveillance conducted, but also delved into the legality of certain practices. Edward Snowden expresses his concerns about the encroachment on privacy, not only in the physical realm, but also in the digital domain. He highlights the immense influence that technology has acquired, prompting a reflection on the developments witnessed in 2013 that now appear insignificant in comparison to the current capabilities of governments. Snowden's words echo the profound transformations that have taken place, compelling us to contemplate the far-reaching implications of these advancements on an individual's right to privacy. In addition to expressing his apprehension about the potential threats posed by governments and big tech, he also raised concerns about commercially available video surveillance cameras, facial recognition technology, artificial intelligence, and invasive spyware like Pegasus that is commonly deployed against dissidents and journalists. Reflecting on the year 2013, Snowden expressed his disappointment by stating, We had placed our trust in the government, hoping that they would act in our best interests. However, they failed us. Similarly, we believed that technology companies would not exploit us, but they proved us wrong. This unfortunate pattern is likely to repeat itself as it is inherent to the nature of power. Edward Snowden, the former National Security Agency contractor, has sought refuge in Russia since 2013 after leaving Hong Kong, where he divulged a vast trove of highly classified files to members of the press. Critics of him vehemently condemn his presence in Russia, asserting that it seems to be his only viable alternative to imprisonment in the United States. Despite the challenges he personally faced, Edward Snowden doesn't allow himself to be consumed by the past. Over the past couple of years, Edward Snowden has consciously made a deliberate effort to limit his public presence. This has resulted in a noticeable decrease in the number of speeches he delivers, as well as his withdrawal from engaging in press interviews and social media platforms. The primary reason behind this shift can be attributed, at least in part, to his responsibilities towards his family. According to Snowden, one of the positive outcomes resulting from the leaks is the extensive adoption of end-to-end -end encryption. This technology has become widely utilized by big tech companies as they aim to address the public's concerns and regain trust following embarrassing revelations that they had been compromising users' privacy by sharing personal data with the NSA. Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest peak and the world's tallest freestanding mountain, has long been a source of fascination for explorers, geologists and historians alike. Its diverse ecosystems, unique geological features, and storied history have made it a prominent subject of scientific research and exploration. In recent years, a team of archaeologists and historians uncovered a remarkable biblical secret buried within the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro, shedding new light on the region's history and its connections to ancient civilizations. In 2000, a team of archaeologists, led by renowned historians and experts in biblical archaeology, embarked on an expedition to Mount Kilimanjaro to study its geological features and potential historical sites. According to a thorough examination of six cores that were extracted from the quickly decreasing ice fields at the peak of Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, 
It has been determined that these tropical glaciers began forming approximately 11,700 years ago. The tropical regions were affected by three major droughts thousands of years ago. Lonnie Thompson, a geology professor from Ohio State University, who led an expedition in the year 2000 to retrieve these cores, described Kilimanjaro's ice fields as stagnant and said that they are currently in a state of decline. Although the biblical story of Joseph is one that is well documented, not only in the Christian Bible, but also in the Torah and Quran, it has generally been treated as a highly dramatized story very loosely based on possible historical events that are intended to teach a lesson, rather than act as a definitive record of what occurred. The story begins with Joseph, the eleventh of twelve sons, who was highly favored by his father Jacob, much to the irritation of the eleven other brothers. He was gifted a token of this favoritism in the form of a lavishly colored coat that sparked the jealousy of his other brothers. The Bible says that the coat was colored with red and purple dyes, which were the most prestigious and valuable colors in the ancient world due to their extreme cost and difficulty in procurement. Faced with such a blatant display of partiality and frightened of the meaning behind strange dreams that he kept having, Joseph's brothers sold him to an Egyptian merchant and returned the coat to Jacob, smeared with goat's blood and claiming that Joseph had passed away. Once in Egypt, Joseph was imprisoned, but his continuing prophetic dreams and skills in interpretation allowed him to gain the attention of the Pharaoh who was troubled with disturbing dreams. Joseph said that the Pharaoh's dreams indicated that there were to be seven years of plenty in Egypt, followed by seven years of famine, and he was given the task of advising the Pharaoh in preparations for the years of famine. During this time, Joseph rose through the ranks of the Egyptian court and quickly became one of the most prominent members of the government as he oversaw grain storage and preparations to see Egypt through the impending seven years of famine. There has never been a record of any high-ranking Egyptian during this period who was called Joseph, and because it was highly unlikely that a foreign servant turned prisoner could reach the ranks of top advisor to the pharaoh, it was always thought that this story was more of a richly embellished parable than a factual tale recounting actual events. However, a recent discovery in Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania has lent some credence to Joseph's story. Mount Kilimanjaro is the source of the Nile River's water, and the Nile River was, and still is, the lifeblood of Egypt. Without it full and flowing, crops and livestock would weaken and would stop growing, and famine would spread across the land, just as Joseph predicted in his interpretations of the pharaoh's dreams. And studies of Kilimanjaro ice cores have found that there was a massive drought that took place about 3,600 years ago, around the same time that Joseph would have been advising the king. Additionally, a canal that was built to keep the Nile River branches open and flowing and allow the tributaries around it to remain fertile did such an excellent job that it is still in use today and functions successfully. Nobody knows who built the canal, but its Arabic name has been passed down from ancient times by the people who live nearby and translates to the waterway of Joseph, leading many to believe that it was built by Joseph in an effort to reduce the impact of the famine. While we may never know which parts of the story are true and which are myths, it certainly seems that these historical discoveries lend credence to the biblical events. The discovery also has significant implications for the study of biblical archaeology, as it provides tangible evidence of the widespread influence of the ancient Israelite civilization and its interactions with other cultures. It underscores the importance of continued research and exploration in order to uncover new insights into the history of the Israelites and their connections to other ancient civilizations. The unearthing of a biblical secret on Mount Kilimanjaro represents a remarkable achievement in the field of archaeology and serves as a testament to the power of interdisciplinary research and exploration. The discovery on the slopes of Africa's highest peak challenges our understanding of the region's history and the connections between ancient civilizations. As scientists continue to delve into the secrets of the past, new discoveries, such as this one, have the potential to reshape our understanding of human history. Leonard Woolley and the Flood – Mesopotamian Archaeological Evidence The Mesopotamian Flood has been speculated on for centuries and has been investigated time and time again. 
The majority of historians assert that the Great Flood occurred during the rise of humanity and was the source of the fabled biblical tale of Noah's Ark. During excavations in 1928-1929, archaeologists at the historical sites of Ur and Kish unearthed flood deposits which they connected with the flood as according to ancient Hebrew scriptures. Sir Charles Leonard Woolley, a famous British archaeologist, arrived at the scene to investigate further and it did not take him long to reach his conclusion. It was, in his eyes, proof of the flood. In an excerpt from his 1954 book, he states, By the time I had written up my notes, I was quite convinced of what it all meant, but I wanted to see whether others would come to the same conclusion. So, I brought up two of my staff and, after pointing out the facts, asked for their explanation. They did not know what to say. My wife came along and looked and was asked the same question, and she turned away remarking casually, Well, of course, it's the flood. The first test pit used by Woolley was tiny, so the following archaeological season he dug up several more test pits, one of which being ridiculously large, 75 by 60 feet, and 65 feet deep. In this pit, he found a deposit of clean, water-laid soil up to 11 feet thick. Notably, this evidence of the flood was lacking in several other pits in the area, but Woolley wholeheartedly believed that he had found proof of the biblical flood. After only a few years, another discovery was made at a third Mesopotamian site, Shurupak, where they found a flood stratum. According to myth, Ziusudra, the Sumerian Noah, lived in Shurupak. This flood residue separated the skeletal remains from the late proto-literate and early dynastic period, dating around 2950 and 2850 BCE, though no other Mesopotamian sites have any such evidence. Despite an attempt made by the creationists to decide an exact timeline for biblical events, the Bible lacks any specific dates for the flood that occurred in Genesis, or any other mentioned happening. Stories of the Mesopotamian flood are useful since one is able to draw similarities and contrast differences between the flood of Noah's Ark in Hebrew scriptures and the myth of the Mesopotamian floods and debate whether they were one and the same. Many scholars through the ages have believed wholeheartedly that the similarities between the two provide irrefutable proof of the biblical flood's existence. As such, the widely accepted view is that the original accounts that appear in Genesis arose in Mesopotamia. And this is further proven by the fact that Mesopotamian accounts of such great terrible flood outdate the accounts made in the Bible. Furthermore, the Sumerian king list references a great flood. The king list is a very complicated document which has multiple editions. It's thought that it was created at some point in 2100 BCE. The king list is a report of every monarch and all the dynasties of ancient Mesopotamia, from the origin of kingship, which descended from heaven, up until the time it was made. However, the list is flawed. The length of each king's reign is impossibly long, and several early dynasties have glaring discrepancies. Even with these mistakes in mind, the Sumerian king list is a valuable document which has preserved names and bloodlines of real, ancient rulers. According to the king list, the flood destroyed everything, cutting through the dynasties until kingship once again descended from heaven and the list of rulers continued. The majority of modern creationists often choose to ignore the Sumerian king list completely, stating that the Mesopotamian flood does not fall into agreement with the liberalist view of the Genesis flood, primarily the fact that, if the Bible is to be taken seriously, Noah and his family were the flood's only survivors. The king list opposes this view. The problem is that if you ignore the evidence provided by the Sumerian king list, then the findings at Ur and Kish must too be ignored as they only support claims of a local flood which would have certainly left survivors. The flood, though intense, was not nearly as large scale as the Bible claimed its Genesis flood to have been, and though severely destructive, would not have destroyed every human in its vicinity. The question of whether what Leonard Woolley found was the remnants of the biblical flood or simply an unrelated natural disaster has yet to be answered because there is a lack of modern investigation. The flooding of southern Mesopotamia was presumably disastrous enough for stories of a great flood to spread through the country and ancient world, but because the records we have are so old and were passed down by word of mouth for centuries before being written down, 
Many details have surely been exaggerated or simply lost to time. A Relic of the Precious Blood In 1247, King Henry III claimed to have his hands on an incredibly precious artifact, a vial containing Jesus' blood. He instructed his nobles to gather for a meeting at Westminster Abbey, London, for the purpose of sharing something with them. This was of the utmost importance, but at the time did not say exactly what he would be disclosing prior to the event. Rather, he only referred to it in vague terms as a holy benefit. As the nobles eagerly and curiously gathered, King Henry finally disclosed the reasoning behind such a gathering. He relayed that he was in possession of what he claimed to be drops of Jesus' blood, which was securely enclosed within a vial. His claims were backed up by various means that would have indicated immense credibility at the time, such as seals from bishops, knights templars, and the Patriarch of Jerusalem. The king ceremoniously carried the vial within his own hands, taking it to the abbey where he entrusted it in the hands of monks. The bishop claimed that whoever praised the relic would be blessed with six years plus 160 days of indulgences. For avid Christian followers, this was most certainly a holy benefit. Surprisingly, though, the reveal of the relic did not gather as much attention as one would expect. This was probably due to the fact that its authenticity and credibility was questioned. Another similar relic was claimed to have been found in a different abbey located in Gloucestershire. This artifact was met with a lot more excitement. As it turns out, though, whoever doubted the authenticity of the relic was not wrong to do so. In fact, King Henry VIII put the vial to the test. The examiners concluded that it was not Jesus' blood, but rather a combination mixture of honey, saffron and maybe goose blood. Some argue that it may have been presented as a political move on King Henry III's part to gain the trust of his people. Today, other exhibits with the same claims exist, with the most famous one being the Basilica of the Holy Blood located in Belgium. Space has been a subject of interest for humans for centuries. There are several reasons why space exploration and the mysteries of the universe capture our imagination. Firstly, space is vast and unexplored, and it's natural for humans to want to explore the unknown. As we discover more about the universe, we gain new insights into the origins of the universe and our place in it. This knowledge can help us better understand our world and ourselves. Every so often, though, NASA captures a mysterious image that leaves us with more questions than answers. The mysterious aircraft seen in the background during Apollo 9. According to enthusiasts who investigate the unknown, during NASA's Apollo 9 mission, a picture was taken that allegedly shows a mysterious object above Earth. Those who've studied this phenomena have said that the photo is believed to be proof of advanced life forms visiting Earth. During a practice run for the historic moon landings, some enthusiasts have pointed out a small black triangle that appeared to be hovering among the clouds. The image has caused much intrigue and speculation among both researchers and casual observers alike. Apollo 9 was a manned space mission launched by NASA on March 3, 1969. The primary objective of the mission was to test the lunar module in Earth orbit to ensure it was ready for use on the Moon. It was the first crewed flight of the lunar module, which had been under development for several years. The crew consisted of three astronauts, Commander James McDivitt, Command Module Pilot David Scott, and Lunar Module Pilot Rusty Schweikart. During the mission, the astronauts spent 10 days in space, orbiting the Earth and conducting a series of tests and experiments. One of the main goals of the mission was to test the docking and separation procedures between the command and lunar modules. The astronauts successfully separated the two modules and then docked them back together multiple times. They also performed a spacewalk to test the suits and tools that would be used on the Moon. In the background of one of these photographs, a mysterious object in the shape of a black triangle can be seen. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that astronauts and military officials have reported seeing these aircrafts. Black triangles are a type of unidentified flying object that has been reported by witnesses across the world. These objects are characterized by their triangular shape and are often described as silent or nearly silent. 
Reports of Black Triangle sightings have been recorded since the 1561 celestial phenomenon over Nuremberg, but they gained more widespread attention in the 1980s and 1990s. One of the most famous reports of a Black Triangle occurred in 1983 in Belgium. Over the course of several months, numerous witnesses reported seeing a large, triangular-shaped object flying low over the countryside. The Belgian military eventually deployed F-16 fighter jets to intercept the object, but they were unable to catch it. The Belgian government conducted an investigation into the sightings, but was unable to explain what the witnesses had seen. Similar sightings have been reported in space by astronauts, detailing that these advanced-looking aircrafts were witnessed above the United States and the United Kingdom. In many cases, witnesses report that the black triangles they saw were larger than any known aircraft and capable of hovering silently in the sky. Theories about the origins of these black triangles range from experimental military aircraft to advanced visitation. Some researchers speculate that the craft could be part of a secret military project, such as the rumoured TR-3B, a supposed top-secret reconnaissance aircraft developed by the United States Air Force. Others suggest that the objects could be advanced spacecrafts, or some other form of advanced technology beyond our current understanding. Despite numerous reports and investigations, the true nature of black triangles remains a mystery. The lack of concrete evidence or a clear explanation for the sightings has led many to speculate about the possible origins of these mysterious objects. Some argue that the continued sightings of black triangles suggest that we are not alone in the universe and that other intelligent beings may be monitoring our planet. As of right now, believers have used photographs like this as evidence for these aircrafts existing. These black triangles remain a fascinating and perplexing phenomenon that continues to intrigue and captivate people across the world. A strange discovery on Mars. This photograph was just posted to social media, with people labeling it as either a feather or a leaf, and said that it was found on the surface of Mars. The strange object was spotted in a Gigapan image of Mars. Gigapan Mars photos are high-resolution images of Mars captured by the Mars rover missions and processed using the Gigapan imaging technique. These photos allow scientists and the general public to explore and study the surface of Mars in unprecedented detail. The Gigapan technique involves taking multiple high-resolution images and stitching them together to create a single, seamless panoramic image. This process results in an image with extraordinary detail and clarity, allowing for a comprehensive study of the Martian landscape. One of the most significant benefits of Gigapan Mars photos is their ability to provide a wealth of information about the geological history of Mars. By examining the images, scientists can identify and study the different rock formations, craters and other geological features on the planet. This helps scientists understand the geological processes that shaped Mars and can provide insights into the planet's past and present. Gigapan Mars photos also offer unique opportunities to explore Mars in a way that was previously impossible. The images allow viewers to zoom in and examine features in great detail, such as the texture of rocks or the shapes of dunes. This provides an immersive and interactive experience for the public to explore Mars as if they were there in person. Due to this photograph recently being shared online, not much information is known about it. But the user who submitted the image to a group that investigates Mars anomalies said that it either looks like a leaf or spikes protruding from the rock, further saying that it sticks out against the backdrop of Mars. As of right now, there's various people who believe that Mars is home to mysterious artifacts, pointing out that many of these objects don't look like natural formations. The Strange Object Above the Moon In November 1969, NASA launched the Apollo 12 manned lunar mission, which proved to be successful by landing humans on the moon for the second time in history following Neil Armstrong's historic leap. Interestingly, a few years back, online researchers came across a strange discovery in the background of one of these images. The photo in question has been re-examined, and believers have said that they've spotted a mysterious object in the frame. The discovery of the alleged object in the archive photo has piqued the interest of many individuals who have been following developments in space. 
Despite the extensive investigations carried out by NASA at the time of the mission, there may be several unexplored aspects of the event that could hold clues as to what this object is. According to users who've spent countless hours looking over the photographs, a strange object in the shape of a disc was reportedly seen hovering over the horizon while at a tilted angle, much like the description provided by those who've allegedly encountered these aircrafts. Those who've seen the image have said that the astronauts who observed this object must have been astounded since there isn't much to see on the moon apart from dust and rocks. The size of the object and the fact that it was hovering would have been a mesmerizing sight for the crew. According to online researchers, there is a very low possibility that the object in question is a glitch on the camera. In other words, they imply that the object is more likely to be real and not just an artifact. Not everyone agrees with this statement. The phenomenon of mysterious aircraft sightings has been a topic of great interest for decades. While many sightings occur on Earth, there have also been numerous sightings in space, including around the International Space Station and during space missions. These sightings have sparked debate and speculation about extraterrestrial life. The sightings of these mysterious objects in space have raised many questions and sparked debate about the possibility of extraterrestrial life and the existence of intelligent alien civilizations. While there are many possible explanations for these sightings, including space debris, optical illusions, and even secret military technology, the mystery of these objects in space continues to capture the imagination of people around the world. The Strange Mars Photo This photograph was posted to a social media page that investigates Mars anomalies, with those who saw the image saying that it looks like a skeleton. Mars, also known as the Red Planet, has long been a topic of fascination for scientists and space enthusiasts alike. As a planet that is relatively close to Earth and has many similarities to our own, Mars has been the subject of numerous missions and studies over the years. Among the many things that have captured the interest of researchers are the various anomalies that have been observed on the surface of the planet. One of the most intriguing anomalies seen on Mars are the so-called bones that have been photographed across the planet. The pyramids of Mars, on the other hand, are a set of three large triangular structures that were first observed in 1976 by the Viking One Orbiter. These structures are located near the Martian equator and have sparked a great deal of speculation about their origin and purpose. Some researchers have suggested that the pyramids are evidence of an ancient civilization on Mars that may have had connections to ancient Egypt on Earth, while others have argued that they are simply natural formations. Other anomalies observed on Mars include strange geometric shapes, unusual patterns in the Martian soil, and unexplained lights that have been observed on the planet's surface. Some of these anomalies may be the result of natural processes, such as wind erosion and mineral deposits, while others may be the result of human error or misinterpretation of data. Despite the many theories and speculations surrounding the anomalies on Mars, the scientific community generally agrees that further investigation is needed in order to fully understand their origins and significance. As of right now, more investigations are needed in order to get to the bottom of what these photographs depict. According to NASA, they have not found any conclusive evidence of advanced life. However, NASA has conducted many missions and projects that aim to search for signs of life beyond Earth. In addition, NASA has participated in numerous scientific studies and collaborations with international space agencies to search for signals from extraterrestrial civilizations, known as the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. While NASA has observed and recorded mysterious objects and many such phenomena over the years, they have said that they typically have plausible explanations, such as natural phenomena, aircraft, or satellites. NASA's planetary defense is a program designed to detect and mitigate potential threats from near-Earth objects, such as asteroids and comets, that could pose a risk of impact to our planet. However, every so often this defense system detects something unusual, and this is exactly what happened when it captured another sighting of an object that's become known as the Ezekiel Wheel. This isn't the first time that the object has been spotted, and each time footage makes its way online, users share their opinion on what they think it is. This discovery was made by the Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory camera, 
and it picked up on what some described as a large wheel traveling through our solar system. The discovery has been of particular interest, as over the last few years NASA has said they're interested in these mysterious aircrafts, saying that while NASA is not directly involved in investigating these sightings, it does collaborate with other agencies and organizations that are responsible for studying and analyzing such reports. For example, NASA works with the United States Air Force, which is responsible for investigating reports of unidentified objects in United States airspace. Those who've researched this object have said that it returns once or twice a year, but note that it could be more than this, as someone has to be actively looking at the footage in order to record it. Those who've seen the object soon gave it the name of the Ezekiel Wheel, and this description comes from the Book of Ezekiel. The Book of Ezekiel is a book of the Hebrew Bible and the Old Testament of the Christian Bible. It's named after the prophet Ezekiel, who is believed to have authored the book. The book of Ezekiel contains a series of prophetic visions and messages from God that were given to Ezekiel during his exile in Babylon in the 6th century BC. Ezekiel's wheel is a term used to refer to a vision described in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, in which the prophet Ezekiel saw a complex, otherworldly arrangement of wheels, eyes and wings in the sky. According to the description in the Bible, Ezekiel saw a whirlwind coming out of the north with a great cloud and a fire flashing back and forth. In the center of the fire was what appeared to be four living creatures, each with four faces and four wings. The creatures had the appearance of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. Each creature was also accompanied by a wheel that intersected with other wheels. The description of Ezekiel's vision has been interpreted in many different ways, with some scholars suggesting that it is a symbolic representation of God's throne or the angelic realm. Others have suggested that the vision may have been the result of a mystical experience or a hallucination. The term Ezekiel's wheel has also been used in popular culture to refer to mysterious aircraft sightings and other paranormal phenomena, as some people have interpreted the vision as evidence of extraterrestrial visitation or advanced technology. It's for this reason that many who believe in the unknown have said that the sighting is of particular importance not only because we can see something physical, but because it's also in the shape of a well-detailed biblical account. Some people have interpreted certain passages in the Bible as references to mysterious aircrafts or encounters with advanced life. The pillar of fire and pillar of cloud that guided the Israelites during their exodus from Egypt in the book of Exodus chapter 13 has been interpreted by some as a description of a spacecraft. Although this mysterious object is interesting and keeps returning, NASA have said that they are well aware of the object and explain that it's nothing unusual. They said the following. Some people have noticed an odd shape, sort of a cross inside a circle, entering the field of view of the HI2 telescope on stereo. This was around the 20th February 2020. Eventually there is a cone shape that appears next to it. You can see the feature in question in this movie moving from right to left, just below on the right side of the image. The answer lies on the exact opposite side of the image. At the same time as this strange-looking feature starts being visible, the very bright planet Venus enters the field of view from the left. Notice that Venus and the feature stay in step almost exactly opposite each other across the middle of the detector. This is not a coincidence. The strange-looking geometrical object is actually an internal reflection of the planet Venus within the telescope optics. End quote. Scientists detect the ghostly signal that reveals the engine of the universe. When we make a discovery that inches us a little closer to being able to confirm a theory, it's thrilling. But when we uncover something monumental, it is truly revolutionary to the field, to our history and to our futures. Physics is a discipline that truly captures our understanding of the world. To advance our understanding of physics is to advance our understanding of everything we are surrounded by. 
In November of 2020, an article was published to the scientific journal Nature, in which scientists detailed their research, where they detected for the first time neutrinos that can be traced back to carbon-nitrogen-oxygen fusion. Carbon-nitrogen-oxygen fusion, otherwise known as the CNO cycle, is a process that occurs inside the Sun. Whilst to those of us who do not know all too much about physics, this particle is a truly iconic moment that will not be forgotten anytime soon. This finding can confirm theories and predictions we have been guessing at since the 1930s. Gioacchino Ranucci, a researcher at the Italian National Institute for Nuclear Physics, said it's really a breakthrough for solar and stellar physics. He has been one of the researchers tackling this project since it first began in 1990. Scientists were able to use the Borixino detector at the IFN's Gran Sasso Particle Physics Laboratory located in central Italy. This is an incredibly sensitive piece of equipment. It is the largest underground research center in the world and sits below the Apennine Mountains. The quest to hunt down this particle is the Borixino project, and uncovering the neutrino we have been looking for concludes decades of predictions and research. It has revealed to us the main nuclear reaction that most stars use to fuse hydrogen into helium. Most stars, including our very own Sun, emit massive amounts of energy by fusing hydrogen into helium. This is essentially a way to burn hydrogen. It is worth bearing in mind that hydrogen is the simplest and most abundant element in our universe, making it the main fuel source. For the Sun particularly, 99% of its energy comes from what is known as proton-proton fusion. This produces beryllium, lithium and boron before they are broken down into helium. It's not always this clear and straightforward. Our Sun is not very big, at least not in comparison to some of the other stars in the universe. It's worth noting that typically the larger the star, the hotter it is. These are therefore powered mostly by CNO fusion. CNO fusion keeps an endless loop between carbon, nitrogen and oxygen as to which atomic nuclei facilitates the fuse of hydrogen into helium. By our calculations, the CNO cycle is the primary type of fusion in the universe. Unfortunately for us, in the star closest to us, the Sun, this accounts for only 1% of its energy. The Borixino detector searches for neutrinos that are produced in the nuclear fusion process at the Sun's core. This is a difficult process due to how hard it is to detect neutrinos. Using neutrinos to study distant nuclear reactions is a preferable and ideal approach since neutrinos have very limited interactions, barely interacting with anything at all. To put into context how difficult it is to detect these elusive particles, trillions of neutrinos pass through the Borixino detector with each passing second, though only a few dozen are detected within an entire day. This is done by looking for small, faint flashes of light produced as they decay in a dark 300-ton tank of water. Having poured decades of research into this, it was not until the last five years that big strides were taken as the detector was made even more sensitive. This was done by blocking external sources of radioactivity. This makes the chamber of the Borixino detector the most radiation-free place on Earth. From this research, we can see the first ever piece of evidence confirming that the long-hypothesized CNO cycle is taking place in the Sun and other stars. This can push us to uncover more about how the cores of our stars are composed as well as a bit more behind the formation process of heavy stars. This one tiny type of particle that has been discovered has had a major, momentous impact upon the world of physics as we know it. Saturn radio signal puzzles astronomers Astronomers are feeling a little baffled by the signals they are getting from Saturn. No, this is not angsty dating we are talking about, it's inconsistent radio signals. The northern and southern hemispheres of Saturn are sending natural radio wave signals that differ from one another. Not only that, but over time, Saturn's radio signals, which are regulated by the planet's rotation, change quite dramatically as time passes. This is possibly synchronized with the seasons of Saturn. 
Fellow gas giant Jupiter gave scientists the false confidence that they understood the radio wave patterns of other gas giants. Saturn is definitely proving them wrong because its radio wave signals are so different. Saturn Kilometric Radiation, or SKR, are the natural radio waves emitted by Saturn. They cannot be heard by the human ear, but when converted to the audio range we can hear, they sound like short bursts of a spinning air raid siren. But this noise varies with each rotation of the planet. Jupiter's steady radio wave pattern gave scientists the opportunity to measure its rotation rate. Saturn, on the other hand, is acting like an unpredictable toddler when it comes to handing over data that will allow its rotation rate to be measured. Other spacecraft, such as NASA's European Space Agency Ulysses Probe and Cassini, collected data that found the radio burst varied by seconds to minutes. In fact, Cassini, which stayed in Saturn's orbit from 2008 to 2017, observed that the radio emissions were in fact a duet and not solo emissions. But the two players in the duet are out of sync. The North Pole radio emissions have a repeat pattern of 10.6 hours, while the radio waves emitted from the South Pole repeat every 10.8 hours. However, even these times are not consistent, and it was shown that over time, Saturn's southern time period made a steady decrease while the northern time increased. Last March, the two came together at approximately 10.67 hours. Since the time of convergence, the southern SKR emissions have continued to decrease, and the northern ones have carried on increasing. As of right now, many people are asking the same question. What is happening in Peru? Over the last few weeks, strange reports have been made by the Akitu people, and they've recently said that something hit the ground. The unknown object was photographed close to a forest, with locals saying that a glowing blue orb could be seen flying throughout the area. As they followed the light, they made a surprising discovery. In a small clearing, a metallic-looking object could be seen, with one of the eyewitnesses saying that orbs could be seen close by, noting that it was like they were inspecting the wreckage. The Akitu people have said that these mysterious reports have been happening for months now, and detailed that something strange is happening throughout the area. The locals said that the unknown object was found hidden inside the dense foliage. The Akitu people, a close-knit community with deep ties to their ancestral land, say that they have lived in harmony with the jungle for generations. One night, the people of Akitu were made aware of a strange and unearthly sound. The air was thick with anticipation, as whispers of the unknown circled among the villagers. The source of the sound remained a mystery, an enigma woven into the fabric of the night. After witnessing glowing orbs throughout the area, the villagers set out to investigate the origin of the mysterious noise. Their journey led them deeper into the heart of the forest, where an astonishing sight awaited them, a circular clearing with a colossal object nestled at its center. The object, like a metal object, emanated an otherworldly energy, casting an eerie luminescence that contrasted with the lush greenery of the jungle. The Akitu people approached the object with a mixture of awe and trepidation. As they drew closer, they realized that it was unlike anything they had ever encountered. Its metallic surface bore intricate patterns and symbols that defied comprehension. The object had the appearance of a craft, a vessel from the skies that had come to rest in their midst. Fearful yet intrigued, the Akitu people debated the significance of the object and the message it might hold. Many automatically linked it to the mysterious encounters that had been happening throughout the area and questioned whether this object was one of the glowing orbs that had been witnessed prior. In the realm of unidentified aerial phenomena, one of the most intriguing and widely reported sightings is that of glowing orbs. These luminous and enigmatic objects have been witnessed by people across the globe, captivating the human imagination and sparking discussions about their origin, nature, and potential significance. Glowing orbs are characterized by their ethereal radiance and luminosity, casting an otherworldly glow that stands out against the night sky. Witnesses describe them as spherical or oval-shaped objects that emit a soft, often pulsating light. The orbs can exhibit a wide range of colors, from pure white and golden hues to more unusual shades such as blue, green and red. Reports of glowing orbs have transcended geographical boundaries and cultural contexts. 
These sightings have been documented across centuries, appearing in ancient texts, historical accounts, and contemporary eyewitness testimonies. The widespread nature of these sightings underscores the profound impact they have had on human perception and consciousness. Glowing orbs are known for their unconventional and often erratic flight patterns. Witnesses frequently describe sudden changes in direction, instantaneous accelerations, and the ability to hover or remain stationary in mid-air. These maneuvers defy the laws of physics as understood by our current technology, leaving experts puzzled as to how these objects achieve such feats. One of the most intriguing aspects of glowing orbs is their potential connection to other dimensions or realities. Some theorists propose that these orbs could be interdimensional beings or craft that exist beyond our limited three-dimensional perception. The orb's ability to appear and disappear seemingly at will fuels speculation that they possess the capacity to traverse the boundaries between dimensions. While this hypothesis is commonly associated with unidentified objects, some scientific explanations have been put forward to account for glowing orbs. One theory suggests that these orbs could be plasma phenomena created by the ionization of gases in the atmosphere. This could explain the orb's luminosity and their ability to change shape and color. Eyewitness testimonies play a significant role in investigations, and glowing orb sightings are no exception. While some sightings can be attributed to misidentifications or hoaxes, the credibility of many witnesses cannot be dismissed lightly. Pilots, military personnel, astronomers, and even law enforcement officers have reported encounters with glowing orbs, adding a layer of credibility to the phenomenon. It's just been announced that the governor of Loreto, Sandra Chumpitas, has given an interview to a local radio station about the mysterious event unfolding in Peru. She reported that these cases are not only in San Antonio de Pintuyacu, but also in many other regions such as San Regis, San Roque, Bagazan, and Zungaracocha. The governor's most recent announcement revealed that she is promoting a task force to investigate the events further, noting that community leaders told her their testimony about what's happening throughout the area. She's reported that letters have been sent to federal police and the public prosecution office. The area can only be reached by boat, with locals saying that it takes over 18 hours to get there, and that this is the reason why journalists haven't investigated what's happening. Oddly enough, since the reports have gone viral, locals throughout the area have said that these mysterious humanoids are still being witnessed. The idea that they are miners with jetpacks has been largely dismissed by those investigating this story, along with those who live in the area. As of right now, glowing entities have been encountered by members of the Ikitu indigenous people in the remote rural district of Alto Nane, northeast of Lima. Photographs of glowing entities have been submitted by locals who live throughout the area, and something that people noticed is that they appear to have big heads and large black eyes. As of right now, many questions remain. Why would gold miners use jetpacks? The average cost of a jetpack is $350,000. Why are eyewitnesses describing them as seven-foot-tall entities, with grey skin and large heads? And how are these humanoids able to give off bright lights? Some have pointed out that the area where these entities have been seen is in the middle of nowhere, and that if criminals wanted to get in there and take what they want, they wouldn't be sneaking around using jetpacks. On top of this, news outlets reported that the people behind these sightings were after gold and said that it can be found in the local rivers. Mining gold from a river requires a combination of specialized equipment to extract the precious metal from the sediment and gravel. This process, known as placer mining, involves separating gold particles from the surrounding material using various techniques. For example, you would need a dredger, which is a floating platform equipped with a powerful suction system that can vacuum up sediment, gravel, and even rocks from the riverbed. Dredgers come in various sizes, from small portable units to large industrial dredge boats capable of processing substantial amounts of material. Heavy-duty excavators equipped with buckets or hydraulic tools, are used to dig into riverbanks, riverbeds, and gravel deposits. They can remove large quantities of material for processing. These heavy-duty pieces of equipment were not reported by witnesses, and the gold miners would have no way of carrying these on jetpacks.
Local authorities described these alleged beings as armored and floating, and the most intriguing aspect is their supposed invulnerability to attacks. The local residents also drew similarities between their assailants and mythical creatures, as well as referring to local Peruvian beliefs surrounding the face peelers. However, the Peruvian law enforcement has recently identified a new individual as a possible suspect. According to experts, the responsibility for illegal gold mining activities can be attributed to criminal organizations, which have caused significant damage to Latin America over the years. Peru's National Prosecutor's Office, currently examining the entities, has attributed responsibility to the gold syndicates, who have faced significant resistance from the Brazilian and Colombian armed forces. According to prosecutors in Peru, these organizations who are using jetpacks aim to instill fear through their unusual tactics, effectively keeping the residents confined to their homes and deterring them from accessing the illegal gold mines. Prosecutors have suspicions that these unauthorized mining organizations initially utilized their jetpacks to explore for gold in the remote and harsh jungles surrounding Peru's Nane River. The Akitu people in rural Alto Nane, Peru, live in close proximity to thick rainforests. In this area, gold has accumulated in the riverbeds of the Nane River's tributaries, as if it were sediment. The Akitu informed journalists that the recent invasion, which started on July 11th, has subjected the residents to relentless assaults by mysterious beings. However, many locals have said that news outlets have twisted their words and said that the entities were not wearing grey clothing, but rather their actual skin was grey, and that the entities gave off no noise and no jetpacks were seen during these encounters. On top of this, these entities were not affected by their weapons and had the ability to give off a blinding light which would disorientate the eyewitnesses. Some have suggested that a possible cover-up is happening and that the illegal activities are being used as a front for what's happening right now. Others backed this up by saying that the entities were over seven feet tall and were very slender. As of right now, officials are trying to suggest illegal miners as a possible cause, but as some have said, human miners are not immune to bullets. According to Jairo Avila, an Ikitu leader, he stated to radio programmers that these individuals are advanced entities. Avila admitted to the local radio station that he fired two shots at them, but instead of falling, the entity stood up and vanished. The mysterious events in the community have caused fear among the residents. However, another witness for the prosecution, a teacher, observed these strange creatures ascending from the ground using more conventional methods. According to Christian Pakaya and other witnesses, the illegal mining syndicate utilized advanced equipment such as propellers and high-tech devices, which Peruvian law enforcement authorities have referred to as jetpacks. The Iquitu people, residing in a village situated about 10 hours away from Loreto's capital Iquitos, find themselves unable to continue their normal routines. In response, they have taken the initiative to form nighttime patrols in order to confront their technologically advanced assailants. They are enacting these measures until the Peruvian military can step in and provide assistance. As of right now, more and more information is being released about the mysterious entities that were sighted in Peru. Oddly enough, since the topic has been trending, locals have been posting photographs of the alleged creatures, with some describing them giving off bright lights, while others have said that they have big heads with larger eyes. Interestingly, locals have said that this isn't the first time that these entities have been witnessed and detailed that locals have allegedly been encountering them now for several months. Archaeologists have recently discovered an undiscovered city believed to be from the Incan Empire, located deep within the Amazon rainforest. According to a documentary, this ancient city may possibly conceal the renowned lost treasure of the pre-Columbian tribe. Most scholars widely acknowledge that the Incas were the most advanced civilization in the Americas. They exerted their control over the Peruvian highlands until the Spanish successfully conquered their final bastion in 1572. Located deep in the Amazon jungle, this city covers an expansive area of over 18,000 square meters and served as a stronghold of resistance. It can only be reached by embarking on a two-day hike from Cusco. Approximately 30% of Chocacirao has been unearthed, and the television program Mysterious World of the Inca 
shed light on the significance of this site. In 2009, scientists mentioned that there are many peculiar and enigmatic locations known as Huaca across the former Inca Empire. These sites were considered to be idols by the indigenous people and were believed to possess extraordinary abilities. Huacas are not solely man-made shrines. They can encompass a variety of forms, including peculiar stones, mountains, or lakes. Choquequirao, a remarkable example of Inca architecture, eluded the Spanish conquerors and remained obscured from their view. After the demise of the final Inca in the late 16th century, Choquequirao gradually faded from memory. The city, known as the Cradle of Gold, was not discovered by Europeans until the mid-19th century, with Hiram Bingham being credited with its rediscovery. The distinctive features of the buildings, such as the trapezoidal windows and the spaces where residents would place their belongings, play a crucial role. Equally significant is the intricate canal system and the precise alignment of the elegant structures. Nonetheless, the series proceeded to uncover the potential existence of remnants from the previous civilization that could potentially be concealed beneath the dense vegetation. The potential secrets hidden within the ruined palaces of the final Inca rulers may hold a portion of the Incas yet to be discovered treasure. In a hidden location, the dense tropical forest conceals the final refuge of the revered Inca sun deity. However, it will take several years before further discoveries come to light. The Amazon rainforest, the largest tropical rainforest in the world, is not only a haven for biodiversity, but also a cradle of ancient civilizations. For thousands of years, diverse cultures thrived in the lush and impenetrable greenery of the Amazon basin. Long before the arrival of European explorers, the Amazon rainforest was home to a myriad of sophisticated civilizations. These pre-Columbian societies, though lesser known compared to their counterparts in Mesoamerica and the Andes, played a significant role in shaping the cultural landscape of the region. One such civilization was the Marajoara culture, which flourished on Marajo Island, at the mouth of the Amazon River, between 400 AD and 1400 AD. The Marajoara people were skilled potters and created intricate ceramic artifacts, including large urns and figurines. Their artistry and craftsmanship reflected their deep connection to the natural world. Contrary to the popular perception of the Amazon as a vast, unpopulated wilderness, ancient Amazonian cultures developed sophisticated social structures and impressive architectural achievements. The culture of the Tapajos people, for example, left behind earthworks and mounds, known as geoglyphs, that indicate the existence of large settlements and complex societies. These earthworks served various purposes, from ceremonial spaces to areas of habitation and trade. The Amazon rainforest provided fertile ground for the development of advanced agricultural practices. Ancient Amazonian cultures cultivated an array of crops, including maize, beans, manioc and sweet potatoes. They utilized innovative techniques such as raised fields and terra preta to enhance soil fertility and productivity. Through generations of experimentation and adaptation, these ancient cultures developed a profound understanding of the ecosystem they inhabited, enabling them to live in harmony with nature. The art of ancient Amazonian cultures was rich and diverse, often reflecting their spiritual beliefs and connection to the natural world. Intricate pottery, textile weaving and intricate body art were common forms of artistic expression. Rituals and ceremonies held great importance in these societies, serving as a means of connecting with the spiritual realm, seeking guidance from ancestors and appeasing the deities that governed the forces of nature. The Amazon rainforest was not an isolated region, but rather a vibrant hub of trade and cultural exchange. Ancient Amazonian cultures engaged in long-distance trade, facilitating the exchange of goods, ideas and technologies. The Vope region in present-day Colombia and Brazil is an excellent example of a hub of cultural exchange. The indigenous peoples of this area had extensive networks of interaction, evidenced by the similarities in their ceramic styles, ritual practices and social organization. Contrary to the popular notion of the Amazon rainforest as an untouched wilderness, these ancient cultures actively managed and shaped their environment to meet their needs sustainably.
The Mystery of the Billy Apes Over a century ago, Belgian colonizers found a large primate skull during their rampage in the northern Congo. The locals would tell them stories of mysterious large apes that would attack and eat lions. Gorillas were never before found in this region of northern Congo, so researchers and explorers were confused and intrigued. They believed it to be an entirely new species of ape, although they never found any additional evidence or proof of life. The skull was promptly left to collect dust in the Royal Museum for Central Africa in Belgium until the 1990s, when Karl Amann read about them in a scientific article. He was a Swiss-born photographer and devoted conservationist. Enraptured by the skull's puzzle, he set off on an adventure through the dense jungles that few had traversed before. The Biliuli Tropical Forest covers 12,000 square miles and is a mix of impenetrable canopy and large stretches of savanna. The researchers had to trek through an impenetrable underbrush full of ants, mosquitoes and bees that were drawn to their sweat. Despite being such a difficult undertaking, a man ended up repeatedly visiting the forest over the span of 10 years, with various rangers, camera crew and primatologists trying to find the elusive Billy Apes. On his first trip, he found another ape skull, which only increased his obsession. In 2004, American primatologist Cleve Hicks joined the search. He spent weeks traversing through the forest trying to find the apes. He and his team set up motion-detecting cameras and eventually captured images of the elusive billy apes. As it turns out, they were not a new species. They were chimpanzees. However, they were unlike any chimpanzees the researchers had seen before. They had larger skulls and feet than other chimpanzees. Their behavior was unique in that they nested on the ground like gorillas instead of in the canopy. They also used the longest tools researchers had seen in Africa to collect ants and honey. On one expedition, researchers came across a chimpanzee eating a leopard, although they did not know whether the chimp had attacked it or not. The locals called them lion destroyers and explained that even their poison darts would not affect the apes. Hicks stated that they were the largest population of wild chimpanzees anywhere in the world. He claimed that they were curious of the humans rather than fearful, which led him to believe that they had never seen humans before. Those that lived closer to civilization would flee when approached, but the apes further in would gather close to observe before quietly leaving. Since they lived in such remote parts of the jungle, it was near impossible for poachers or any other humans to encounter them. Today, though, the forest is a hiding spot for many fugitives or rebel groups and is being turned into farmland. Reports of Huge Snakes In 1959, Belgian Air Force Colonel Remy van Lierde spotted something rather peculiar as he flew over the forests of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Van Lierde served at the Kamina Air Base, located in Congo, which was, at the time, occupied by Belgium. The colonel had been going home by helicopter after a mission flying over the Katanga region when he spotted what he described as a huge snake lurking within the forests. The description he gave of the snake was terrifying, to say the least, with Van Lierde describing it as reaching 50 feet long, with a head approximately 2 feet in width and 3 feet in length. He also mentioned the head being a triangular shape. If these figures are correct, these hidden snakes earn a rank amongst the longest snakes to live in all the history we have accessible. Regarding color, this mysterious, large snake reportedly has green and brown scales on top but has a white underside. This encounter was short-lived, however, as Van Lierde and his pilot were mid-flight. The team, upon Lierde's request, made a U-turn circling round to take another look at this alleged giant snake. Upon the team returning, the snake, assumed to be defending territory, reared his upper half. This stance was assumed to indicate he was ready to strike as a result of the team's nosy impositions. Regardless, this lifted pose clued Van Lierde in as to the snake having a white-coloured underneath. 
Due to the low nature of the helicopter and the aggressive position of the snake, Van Leerd commanded for the flight to continue, not hanging around long enough for trouble to come, leaving this peculiar snake behind without making any specific documentation of it. Some suggest that the photographer aboard managed to capture a relatively blurred image of this curious creature, though it has been difficult to definitively trace back to those traveling with Leerd. Mostly, people assume that this snake is a vastly oversized African rock python, a product of evolution from descent of the giant Eocene snake Gigantophis, or perhaps this is a new species of snake altogether. We cannot know for certain. The asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs may have created the Amazon. The asteroid that plummeted to Earth over 66 million years ago and ended the reign of the dinosaurs is a well-known phenomenon. However, recent discoveries have led researchers to believe that the infamous meteorite may have been responsible for something else as well, the creation of the impressively diverse Amazon rainforest. A new study published in the Journal of Science analyzed thousands of fossilized plants in an attempt to understand the effects of the mass extinction caused by that fateful asteroid. An estimated 75% of all life on Earth, from gigantic dinosaurs to microscopic bacteria, went extinct as a result. But now the area is home to one of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. Analyzing the effects of this first mass extinction is crucial in understanding what might happen as a result of a second mass extinction event. What the researchers found surprised them. According to the study, it appears that the same blast that wiped out such a significant portion of life on Earth was also responsible for creating the entirety of the tropical rainforests on our planet. As expected, analysis of plant fossils from before and after the blast revealed drastically altered landscapes. Before the asteroid, the land was full of sparsely growing conifers and ferns, whose wide spacing allowed plenty of light to reach the ground, so unlike the dense jungle that we are familiar with in the Amazon. Following the extinction of millions of species, Plant diversity declined an estimated 45%, and analysis of over 50,000 fossilized pollen records showed that angiosperms, or flowering plants, predominated the region for the next 6 million years, covering what had once been a semi-diverse land with what has been called the Reign of Flowers. As the area began to recover from the devastation and new species started to emerge, the plants began growing much more thickly, allowing for dense vertical growth that promoted the development of new species of shade-loving plants that thrived in the new ground level of the developing jungle. The researchers offered three predominant theories as to why the regrowth looked so different from what was there before. The first and most widely accepted is that the enormous dinosaurs that roamed the area before their extinction prevented more dense growth simply due to their large bulk that trampled plants, in addition to the sheer number of plants the large herbivores likely consumed. The other two theories suggest that falling ash from the blast may have created soil that was more beneficial to the faster-growing flowering plants, or that the extinction of the conifers provided a perfect opportunity for the flowering plants to take over. The researchers were so interested in the before and after of this great meteorite because the Amazon rainforest and surrounding areas are currently undergoing what is called the second mass extinction, only this one is caused entirely by humans. Monica Carvalho, who co-authored the study, concluded with the grim takeaway. The lesson learned here is that under rapid disturbances, tropical ecosystems do not just bounce back, they are replaced and the process takes a really long time. The findings of the research study are fascinating but grim, as they indicate that if drastic action is not taken, and soon, we may stand to lose the rainforests and all they offer the world, possibly forever. Mysterious geoglyphs reveal Amazon was densely populated. Once thought to be an untouched paradise, the pre-Columbian Amazon may have actually been home to millions of people. Until recently, it was assumed that the Amazon was a pristine paradise with only a few groups of nomadic people living around the Amazon River to sustain themselves. New research in the Brazilian state of Mato Grosso suggests a new story entirely. 
As it turns out, the rainforest could have actually been home to millions living in large interconnected villages. With much of the region covered in dense forest, the area has always been challenging to navigate for any archaeologist interested in finding out more about how Amazonians lived away from the river and its resources. Using satellite imagery, teams were able to identify geoglyphs, which are ancient geometric ground drawings made by humans out of the earth, stone, and low-relief mounds, presumably part of a ritual for the gods, especially in times of drought. Once they had the geoglyphs, the team went into the field to the precise locations to see if they could actually find any remnants of ancient civilizations there. They were overjoyed when all 24 areas they visited contained some form of proof that people had lived there. In one site, they found old ceramics estimated to be from 1410 AD. After returning to their labs, they then used their findings to predict the locations of other possible sites, which revealed there are likely 1,300 villages and geoglyphs in the 154,000 square mile area of southern Amazonia two-thirds of which have yet to be found. The research team now believes that between 500,000 and 1 million people once lived in a mere 7% of the Amazon basin. Prior to this research, it was estimated that the entire basin had only ever been home to 2 million people. The possibility of there being even more sites suggests that these interconnected villages spanned over 1,100 miles during their peak years between 1200 and 1500 AD. It appears that there are more discoveries to be found in the Amazon. Civilizations that used to live within the Amazon since the 16th century, we have held the warped belief that the Amazon rainforest was largely untouched and entirely natural. It was a common assumption that prior to the Spanish invasions, only small groups of nomadic people lived intermittently along the Amazon riverbanks and estuary. Though, new research suggests otherwise, revealing vast interconnected villages near the Amazon. Areas of the Amazon that previously could not be explored have been made accessible due to the development of satellite imagery. This allows for even the densest areas of the forest to be explored, letting archaeologists search for the ancient geoglyphs that indicate the presence of civilizations. Geoglyphs are art pieces formed through the moving of the landscape, such as arrangements of stones. The team, funded in part by National Geographic, had a set of 24 coordinates they considered leads, all of which proved to be positive. One in particular, however, proved to be incredibly useful, leading scientists to ceramics and charcoal, which testing indicated comes from 1410 CE. Trends also seem to show that the geoglyphs are most likely to be found in places on high elevation, such as the hills within the Amazon. This new research shows that the civilizations had settled in a wider space than we thought, as people lived further than the riverside with settlements spanning over 1,100 miles. Another conclusion drawn from this study is that the population densities predicted through computer modeling were higher than thought previously. It was thought, prior to this research, that 2 million lived in the Amazon rainforest. But now we know 500,000 to 1 million live within only 7% of the Amazon basin. A previous idea was that after the European conquests, those who lived in the forest had passed away due to diseases and genocide. Primary author of the research project, Jose Iriarte, archaeologist from the University of Exeter, said in relation to this, we need to reevaluate the history of the Amazon. Other information we know surrounding the history of the civilizations living in the Amazon is fairly limited. The Inca Empire was at its height of productivity and growth when the Spanish, French, Dutch and English invasions began to occur. Inca's societies were based in Cusco, Peru, and these small societal groups and communities stretched into the Amazon lowlands. The assumption that the rainforest was untouched and the ignoring of these groups stems from the European invasions of early modern Europe. The diseases brought over by these new groups led to rapid loss of lives, effectively erasing the appearance of the hard work and lifestyle of these indigenous groups, as the rainforest appeared uninhabited to newcomers. With the European conquests, many indigenous people became victims in forced labour camps, eventually resulting in the tragedy of enslavement and genocides of these remarkable groups of people. 
pilot survives in jungle for 38 days. Crash landing your plane in the middle of the unforgiving Amazon rainforest with no way of communication or any hope of rescue sounds like a plot from a cheesy film. Yet, unfortunately, it is exactly what happened to Brazilian pilot Antonio Senna. The 36-year-old was hired to fly supplies to an illegal gold mining operation in the middle of the rainforest. However, he was only halfway there in his single-engine plane when the engine failed, leaving him approximately 1,000 meters to make a crash landing decision. Fortunately, he was cushioned by the canopy of the trees and was able to miraculously land unharmed. Unfortunately, he was now stranded in the inhospitable Amazon rainforest, covered in gasoline with only a backpack, three water bottles, four soft drinks, bread, rope, a lantern, and two lighters. Shortly after, he gathered what he could and left the plane. It exploded, leaving him totally alone and abandoned with no shelter. Although he heard rescue planes overhead searching for him, the trees were too dense for them to spot him, and eventually, even those beacons of hope disappeared. I was devastated. I thought I would never make it out, that I was going to die, he said. With essentially no provisions, he relied heavily on survival instincts to stay alive and avoid the dangerous predators like jaguars, anacondas, and crocodiles, in addition to the infinitely more poisonous and harder to avoid threats like bullet ants and poison dart frogs. He had crashed in a location so deep in the jungle that it was totally untouched by humans, and he stayed alive by eating only fruits that he saw monkeys eating. These fruits consisted of his entire diet for the totality of his ordeal, excepting three bird eggs that he managed to scavenge. He walked east day after day, just trying to stay alive and hoping that he would eventually run into civilization. And finally, after 35 days of walking, covering over 28 kilometers and losing 25 kilos, he stumbled towards the welcome sounds of a chainsaw and discovered a family of Brazil nut foragers. The family immediately took him in and began nursing him back to health, after helping him contact his mother to let her know he was safe. He is very thankful that he was able to be rescued and appears to have had a change of heart after his ordeal, saying, despite the circumstances that led to that flight, being found by a family of gatherers who work in harmony with nature, who don't damage the forest, that was magical. Needless to say, he has stopped flying for illegal miners after his safe return home. In the town of Frankfurt, nestled among the busy streets, lived a man named Otto. An unassuming computer technician by day and a stargazer by night, Otto often found solace in the vastness of the cosmos. One fateful afternoon, while on a leisurely walk through the local park, he stumbled upon something that would create more questions than answers. A small, inconspicuous USB stick lying half buried in the dirt. Curiosity peaked, and the man picked up the USB stick and returned home. He plugged it into his computer, half expecting to find someone's forgotten family photos or mundane files. However, what he discovered defied all expectations. The USB stick contained a trove of photographs that seemed to belong to the realm of science fiction. As he scrolled through the images, Otto noticed that they depicted secret space missions, orbital stations, and landscapes of celestial bodies he had never seen before. Some photos showed astronauts in suits he didn't recognize, exploring landscapes on planets far from Earth. But what captured his attention most were the images of unidentified objects hovering above our planet. The photos were accompanied by cryptic notes, alluding to covert space missions, government secrecy, and a hidden cosmic narrative. Otto didn't know what to make of these images, but was aware that they carried the weight of unknown consequences. Wanting to find out more, Otto embarked on a quest to unravel the enigma behind the USB stick's contents. As he dove into research, he noted that he wasn't able to find out any more information about these mysterious photographs. After spending countless hours researching the images, Otto found himself caught in a web of theories, whistleblowers' testimonies, and shadowy organizations. He discovered that some of the photographs matched descriptions given by alleged insiders, further blurring the lines between reality and speculation. Otto said that his research led him to an underground network of truth-seekers and investigators, individuals who had dedicated their lives to uncovering the hidden truths of the cosmos. However, 
Otto said that these discoveries came with consequences, and his personal life began to unravel as he became consumed by his pursuit. Friends grew distant, his job suffered, and he found himself being contacted by unknown numbers. As of right now, Otto said that these photographs sent him down a rabbit hole that opened his mind up to the world's truths. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that mysterious photographs have been uploaded online, and many who've investigated these claims have said that secret space missions have been happening for years. The realm of space exploration has long captivated humanity's imagination, inspiring grand achievements and scientific breakthroughs. Yet, beyond the publicized missions and celebrated triumphs, a shadowy world of secret space missions exists, a domain cloaked in classified information and veiled by intrigue. Secret space missions exist on the periphery of official space exploration narratives. These missions, conducted by government agencies or military organizations, are shielded from public knowledge for a multitude of reasons, often tied to national security, defense research, espionage, or technological advancement. Operating in secrecy allows agencies to maintain an edge in strategic capabilities while preventing adversaries from exploiting vulnerabilities. Many secret space missions stem from a need to safeguard national security interests. Advanced reconnaissance satellites, for example, offer invaluable real-time intelligence on potential threats or adversaries. These orbiting sentinels can monitor troop movements, weapons development, and any activities that could affect a nation's safety. The secrecy surrounding such missions ensures that sensitive information remains protected. Secret space missions have played a pivotal role in advancing cutting-edge technologies that often find applications beyond space exploration. The research and development required for these missions can lead to breakthroughs in propulsion systems, communication technologies, miniaturized electronics, and advanced materials. Due to these leaks, it's caused some to question whether we are alone in the universe, and it's this question that has captivated human minds for centuries. As our understanding of the cosmos has deepened, so too has the realization that the universe is vast, teeming with countless stars and planets. This realization has given rise to the notion that we might not be alone, that advanced civilizations could theoretically abound in the cosmos. The Drake Equation, formulated by astrophysicist Frank Drake, attempts to estimate the number of detectable advanced civilizations in our galaxy. It takes into account factors such as the rate of star formation, the fraction of stars with planets, the number of habitable planets per star, the likelihood of life emerging, the development of intelligent life, and the capability to communicate across space. This equation suggests that the number of potential advanced civilizations could be substantial. The discovery of exoplanets, planets orbiting stars outside our solar system, has revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos. Many of these exoplanets lie within their star's habitable zone, where conditions might be conducive to the existence of liquid water, a crucial ingredient for life as we know it. With billions of stars in our galaxy alone, the sheer number of potentially habitable planets significantly increases the likelihood of advanced civilizations emerging. The Fermi paradox poses the question, if the universe is teeming with potential habitats for advanced civilizations, why have we not yet observed any signs of extraterrestrial life? There are various hypotheses to explain this paradox, including the possibility that advanced civilizations are rare, that they tend to self-destruct, or that they communicate in ways that we are not yet capable of detecting. However, the paradox also raises the notion that there could be factors we have not yet considered. The Copernican principle asserts that there is nothing special about Earth's position in the universe. In other words, the conditions that allowed for life on Earth are likely to exist elsewhere as well. This principle challenges the idea that Earth is unique and suggests that the emergence of life and advanced civilizations could be a natural consequence of the right conditions. The rapid technological advancements humanity has achieved in a relatively short span of time underscore the potential for other civilizations to develop advanced technologies. If we consider the exponential growth of our own technological capabilities, it stands to reason that civilizations that have evolved for much longer periods could have reached levels far beyond our own. Our understanding of life is based on our experiences on Earth, where life thrives in diverse environments and forms. 
If life can adapt and flourish in such a wide range of conditions, it suggests that advanced civilizations might come in forms radically different from what we envision. Our limitations in comprehending these alternative life forms could explain why we have not yet detected them. The age of the universe allows for vast cosmic timescales, during which advanced civilizations could have arisen, evolved and disappeared. The universe's immense age offers ample opportunity for the emergence of advanced beings, especially if they possess the ability to sustain their societies over long periods. The concept of parallel development suggests that certain conditions necessary for the emergence of life and advanced civilizations might be universal. If these conditions are met, similar evolutionary pathways could occur on different planets, leading to the development of intelligence and technology. This idea implies that advanced civilizations could share common traits despite being separated by vast distances. One reason we may not have detected advanced civilizations is the vastness of interstellar distances. Even with advanced technologies, communicating across such expenses would pose challenges. Our current methods of communication, radio waves for instance, disperse over distance, making detection difficult. Advanced civilizations might use communication methods beyond our current comprehension. The concept of panspermia has ignited scientific curiosity and philosophical contemplation for centuries. The notion that life could be spread across the cosmos through celestial mechanisms challenges traditional ideas about the origin and distribution of life. The idea of panspermia dates back to ancient civilizations that speculated about life's origins and its potential dissemination throughout the universe. However, the modern scientific formulation of the theory can be attributed to the 5th century BC Greek philosopher Anaxagoras. He proposed that life's seeds could be transported through space, seeding other celestial bodies. Panspermia theory comes in several forms, each proposing different mechanisms for the transportation of life's building blocks or organisms across space. Lithopanspermia. This form suggests that life could be carried within rocks or meteorites, ejected from one planet or celestial body to another. These rocks could shield microorganisms from the harsh conditions of space and potentially deliver them to hospitable environments where they could thrive. Radiopanspermia. High-energy radiation could propel microscopic particles, including microorganisms, into space. The energy from cosmic rays or solar radiation could dislodge these particles from a planet's surface, launching them on journeys through space. Directed panspermia. This variation of the theory posits that intelligent civilizations could deliberately send life-forming molecules or even microorganisms to other planets. This concept raises ethical questions about the potential impact of introducing alien life to new environments. Gravitational panspermia. Gravitational interactions between celestial bodies, such as planets or moons, could lead to the exchange of material. Microbes or organic molecules could hitch a ride on comets or asteroids, which might then collide with other planets. Panspermia suggests that the seeds of life could be present in the form of microbial life or even complex organic molecules. Microbes, known for their resilience in extreme environments, could survive the harsh conditions of space including vacuum, radiation, and extreme temperatures. Organic molecules, essential for the emergence of life, could be transported within icy grains, or the interstellar medium itself. While direct evidence for panspermia remains elusive, researchers have identified microorganisms' potential to survive the rigors of space in laboratory experiments. Additionally, the discovery of complex organic molecules in meteorites and the detection of amino acids in interstellar dust provide tantalizing hints that the building blocks of life might indeed travel through space. Panspermia raises intriguing questions about the origin of life on Earth. If life's seeds were delivered from elsewhere, it might explain the rapid emergence of life after the conditions on Earth became suitable. Panspermia doesn't answer the question of life's ultimate origin, but shifts the focus to the possibility of life's formation elsewhere in the universe. Panspermia has profound implications for the search for advanced life. The theory suggests that life could exist in places previously deemed inhospitable. For instance, 
Extremophiles on Earth provide examples of how life can survive in extreme environments, offering potential analogues for conditions on other planets. Beyond the confines of our solar system, panspermia could extend to the interstellar realm. The notion of life-bearing objects traveling between star systems challenges our understanding of the potential for life to colonize not only planets within our own galaxy, but also those in distant galaxies. The deliberate introduction of life to other planets, as proposed in directed panspermia, raises ethical concerns. Introducing alien organisms to ecosystems could disrupt existing ecological balances and potentially lead to unintended consequences. Panspermia connects life's journey with the cosmic ballet of celestial bodies, revealing the intricate interplay between the universe's components. It blurs the boundaries between individual planets, stars and galaxies, suggesting that life's story is woven into the fabric of the cosmos itself. As of right now, panspermia, with its diverse forms and implications, offers a tantalizing perspective on the origin, distribution and potential prevalence of life in the universe. While it remains a theoretical concept, panspermia challenges us to rethink the boundaries of life and the mechanisms that might have enabled its journey across the cosmos. As our understanding of exoplanets, astrobiology and the intricacies of space exploration deepens, the exploration of panspermia continues to inspire wonder and curiosity about life's cosmic odyssey. In the vast expanse of space, the moon has always captivated the human imagination. Among the many lunar mysteries, the discovery of a peculiar tower on the far side of the moon by a Soviet spacecraft stands out. In July 1965, the Soviet spacecraft Zond-3 embarked on a historic journey, becoming the first mission to capture images of the far side of the moon. Zond-3 successfully transmitted photographs, revealing previously unseen terrain on the lunar surface. However, among the images, one stood out, an intriguing tower-like structure perched on the moon's far side. The tower discovered by Zond-3 remains a topic of speculation and debate. The photographs captured a large tower-like formation rising from the lunar surface. Its distinctive shape and apparent structure have ignited curiosity and inspired countless theories about its origins and purpose. The enigmatic tower on the far side of the moon has generated various theories and speculations. Zond 3 was meant to reach Mars, and photographing the far side of the moon was a secondary objective for the spacecraft. Scientists equipped the Zond 3 with extremely useful technologies, equipping the spacecraft with two cameras, infrared and ultraviolet spectrometers, a magnetometer, a cosmic ray detector, a solar particle detector, and a meteoroid detector. Zond 3 made its way to the moon 33 hours after being launched on July 18, 1965. Just as it passed the far side of the moon, its cameras started exploring the far side of Earth's satellite, focusing on the 30% that its predecessor, Luna 3, had missed, taking one picture every 2 minutes and 15 seconds for a total period of 1 hour and 8 minutes. After a period of 9 days from taking the images, Zond-3 transmitted these images back to the Soviet operators on Earth. These images were the first of their kind, and helped scientists discover several geological formations present on the far side of the Moon. However, one of these images particularly intrigued the researchers, and those interested in the unknown. On the far side of the Moon, a puzzling tower-like structure is visible in one of the images taken. The structure stands out as there is no other similar formation in its vicinity. The image is believed by researchers to be compelling proof for their theory of possible advanced structures on Earth's moon. As of right now, very little information has been released about the structure. Interestingly enough, this isn't the first time that mysterious monoliths have been found throughout our solar system, and it's for this reason that researchers have suggested that they could be evidence of advanced life. Some propose natural explanations, suggesting that the formation may be a result of geological processes or impact crater remnants. Despite the intrigue, many scientists approach the tower with skepticism. They argue that the tower-like appearance may be an illusion caused by lighting conditions, shadows, or pixelation in the Zond-3 images. They emphasize the need for further exploration, 
and comprehensive data to provide a clearer understanding of the lunar terrain. The discovery of the tower on the far side of the moon has fueled the ongoing quest for knowledge about our celestial neighbor. As space exploration continues to advance, upcoming missions aim to uncover more secrets hidden within the moon's unexplored regions. These missions, equipped with advanced technology and instruments, hold the potential to provide more detailed observations and insights into the lunar mysteries. Dr. Gordon Gallup says alien life may be too scared of dangerous humans. The idea that we are not alone in the universe has paved the way for some of the best science fiction films and fueled many conspiracy theories. The odds are that there must be life out there, perhaps more advanced than us. So, if that is the case, why haven't these aliens reached out? Dr. Gordon Gallup, a biopsychologist, has suggested that the existence of alien life is not implausible, but that the reason we have not heard from the alternate life forms out there is that they could be afraid of us, the dangerous and violent humans. Dr. Gordon Gallup, who works at the University of Albany, presents the view that the awful acts us humans take out against one another, not to mention our planet, might be keeping aliens at bay. If they can see what we are like as a species, why would they want to reveal their presence? Gallup calls us humans, quote, violent and dangerous, citing our many and constant conflicts as a reason to be too afraid to let us discover them. He says, if there is intelligent life elsewhere, they may view humans as extremely dangerous. We pose too great a risk and they do not want to be discovered. The point Gallup makes was published in the Journal of Astrobiology and he is not sugarcoating our awful impact on the world. He was clear that the impact of the planet and our own societies are far too destructive to appeal to extraterrestrial guests. His argument is that if there is intelligent life out there, they certainly are not likely to visit Earth. Gallup's idea that we are scaring aliens away is a new twist in the warnings we have been given before. Scientists, most notably the late great astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, famously had concerns should we ever interact with aliens. He agreed it was likely there was intelligent alien life out there, describing people who claimed we were the only intelligent life form as arrogant. He thought it was us who had a cause for concern, not them. He likened the arrival of aliens on Earth to the arrival of Christopher Columbus first making it to America which, as we know, had a truly tragic impact upon the indigenous populations already in America. He believes any intelligent life that is far more evolved than us would have little concern in taking over our lands and home for their own gain, quite the opposite view to Gallup. Whether you believe it is us for whom an alien encounter would end badly or for the aliens themselves, both scientists seem to agree that we should not go looking for any alien buddies anytime soon. Scientists document triple star system. Because the ability to peer deeply into space and record accurate measurements is a new technological advancement, there have not been very many instances where scientists have been able to track the progress of a celestial body across more than a few decades. Recently, a team was able to document the history of a triple star system called HS Hydra across 125 years which enabled them to come up with enough of a comprehensive history that they were able to predict the likely future of the system. The team was able to accomplish this by looking at the first ever observations of HS Hydra, which were recorded all the way back in 1893, when all that would have been visible was the twinkling of yet another star in the night sky. As technology advanced and we were able to obtain more detail about this specific twinkling star, it became very evident that this was a dynamic system with more than a few surprises in store. And now, scientists hope to be able to further unravel the mysteries of this system by employing NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which has previously been used to hunt for alien worlds, but will now be turned towards the discovery of hidden mysteries within binary star systems and the three-star system HS Hydra. But what makes HS Hydra so special and mysterious? For starters, it stands out from typical dynamic binary star systems due to the simple fact that, in 2012, 
Astronomers observing the well-studied system with fresh eyes noticed that it was composed of three stars instead of two, and these stars blink in and out as eclipses viewable from Earth. Long before this fascinating fact was known, early astronomers were recording and immortalizing HS Hydra. In fact, the first images of it were taken in 1893 and had to be captured on glass plates that were changed out in the dark of night. From that point on, HS Hydra was frequently documented using both glass plate photography and logbook entries recording original observations from early astronomers. Today, even without including the glass plates whose images have been compromised over time, over 1,000 images and observations remain to include within the timeline of this system. The history is so complete that researchers working on the project even described it as a time machine telescope looking back into the past. Because of this amazing history that researchers and scientists were able to compile, we now have a thorough understanding of the history of HS Hydra which will hopefully allow us to peer into the future of the three-star system using the observations of TESS. Never has such complete history been able to be observed, and astronomers are thrilled about the possibilities for research and knowledge that might lie within the mysteries of this system. Nearly 1,000 Mysterious Strands Revealed in Milky Way's Center One of the most exciting things about space is that we know we cannot see everything that lies beyond our atmosphere. This means that every time a new technological advancement is made in telescope, satellite or imaging technology, we get to learn about and discover a bit more of the space around us. Four decades ago, Farhad Yusuf Zadeh, a researcher at Northwestern University, was able to utilize radio wavelength observations to capture stunning images of the mysterious center of the Milky Way that revealed strange cosmic ray electrons organized in magnetic one-dimensional strands stretching up to 150 light-years long. In the intervening decades, very little progress has been made in the discovery of what exactly these strands do and how they could have ended up there. A recent image taken from Saro's Meerkat telescope has been able to illuminate this mysterious region in a new light at last. Revealed in crisp detail are almost 1,000 strange strands dangling in space, paired or clustered, and spaced fairly regularly in a stacked formation amidst the radio emissions of surrounding cosmic events. Researchers working on the project were able to generate this image, which could very likely revolutionize the way that we view the ambiguous area at the center of the Milky Way by creating a mosaic of images taken from the Meerkat telescope at 20 different locations, all aiming towards the center. This technique generated a panoramic image with the background removed that left only a startlingly clear view of the strands which will allow for an amazing amount of further study as scientists attempt to unravel the mysteries surrounding these strange strands at the center of the Milky Way. But how do they hope to accomplish such a monumental task? For starters, the team of researchers is focused on gathering as much statistical data as possible about the strands, which they currently believe to be related to earlier activity of the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way to detect any key variations among the particles as well as to get a general idea of their properties. Additionally, they want to get a better understanding of the magnetic fields and cosmic rays surrounding the strands, which indicate that many of them likely do not share the same origin. To do this, each individual filament must first be carefully identified and catalogued. Another important element of the image is the fact that researchers will now be able to clearly observe the strands along with the passage of time and will be able to determine whether the strange filaments are constant or evolving. Although it seems that this image created more questions than answers, it acted as a door to amazing knowledge regarding the mysteries that lie at the center of the Milky Way, and hopefully many more answers will be revealed through the course of time. lost continents beneath Antarctica and veiled in old satellite. Sometimes the newest discoveries can come from the most unlikely places. A satellite that is no longer in use was able to point researchers towards ancient continents that were yet to be discovered. This was after old data underwent a new analysis. The Gravity Field and Steady State Ocean Circulation Explorer, or GOCE, missions data was analyzed again in 2018 
nine years after its initial launch. The second look over this data has shown cratons in the lithosphere. This essentially means that in between the mantle and crust of Earth, there are some rocky areas that we had not guessed were there. Scientists seem to believe that the cratons or rocky areas that have been found are leftover structures that had formed ancient continents, and further research into them could provide an insight into how the continents we know today are composed. An official statement made from those involved in the study at the European Space Agency explained the potential for a modern application of this research and how it may particularly aid our understanding of Antarctica due to its close proximity. The co-author of the research paper, Fausto Faraccioli, and science leader of geology and geophysics at the British Antarctic Survey described Antarctica's composition as an exciting mosaic of geological features. He goes on to explain that throughout East Antarctica, there is an observable array of similarities that can be seen in the Antarctic crust and the crust of the continents it was once joined to 160 million years ago. The GOCE satellite was in orbit between March 2009 and November 2013 before it was declared not working. Satellites are built to have a short lifespan at the moment, between 5 and 15 years, as designing them with longevity in mind is a complex task due to the inconsistency in solar arrays or simply running out of fuel. When active, GOCE was built to observe changes, fluctuations and variations in the gravity on Earth no matter how minuscule they may have appeared. The data collected produced a worldwide global gravity map. It also revealed that there were local changes in gravity with a small resolution of 80 kilometers. The new analyses unearthed the ancient continents when a map of shape indexes was created by researchers at the British Antarctic Survey and Kiel University. When making this research more accessible, the European Space Agency compared the space indexes to contours you might see on a map. Jörg Ebbing, a geophysicist working with Kiel University in Germany, elaborated on the necessity of looking at both the gravitational data and the seismological data simultaneously in order to ensure more consistency and accuracy when producing images of both the crust and upper mantle of the Earth. Creating these images and 3D modeling is necessary for researchers to do, if they want to understand the mechanics behind how plate tectonics and the deep mantle interact. The next step in this research is to see how the ancient continents are impacting modern-day Antarctica and how climate change could affect these ancient continents in their dormant state. Researchers hope the gravity gradients which have been freshly scoured through can help find some answers. The discovery of ancient continents and gravitational variations is certainly not a simplistic field of study but one with great promise and an exciting future ahead of it. A Belgian farmer accidentally moves the border of France. We tend to believe that country borders are, in our modern time, set in stone, but apparently this is not the case, as a Belgian farmer managed to spark controversy by re-establishing the French border. When an enthusiastic historian was walking in the forest between the two countries, he noticed that the stone, which symbolised the boundary between Belgium and France, had been moved a whole 7.5 feet. It turned out that a nearby farmer moved the stone because it was in the path of his tractor, unaware of the importance of the stone and, with the stone, he moved the entire portion of France's border. For the most part, both the Belgian and French populations have been able to laugh about the situation, although state officials are somewhat antsy over the move. The slightest move of a border brings with it tons of paperwork and establishments to sort out. The current border spans 620 kilometers, and the border was established in 1820 after Napoleon's infamous Waterloo defeat. The stone's original placement dates back to 1819, when the border was initially planned out. The mayor of the Belgian town where the border lies commented on the matter jovially. I was happy, my town was bigger, but the mayor of the French town opposite the border, boussigny sur was less amused. All those involved agreed on one thing, however, that a border conflict ought to be avoided. Currently, the plan is to make the Belgian authorities contact the farmer and have him return the stone to its original location. Though, if that does not happen, the case will be taken to the Foreign Ministry of Belgium and might cause another Franco-Belgian conflict 
with the farmer risking criminal charges if he refuses to comply. The Treaty of Kochlik is a historical event of importance that is responsible for the formation of the border. There are several smaller treaties involved under it, signed by France back in the 19th century, but these treaties failed to solve all the Franco-Belgian problems of the territory. For the next few years, from 1820 until 1825, the French and Belgian people argued over the border's exact positioning. Borders of the 19th century, in general, were a thing of nightmares. With countless revamps, especially when it came to French borders with rivers bursting or rerouting, which, in turn, required revised border discussions with the neighboring nations. The borders had to move again after the 1914 to 1918 conflict, when Alsace-Lorraine was returned from Germany under the Treaty of Versailles, which prompted debates of whether the Franco-Belgian border should also be re-established, but the discussion was abandoned soon thereafter. It is fortunate that Belgium and France have such a great political-social relationship, because there have been reports of locals moving and even vandalizing other countries' border landmarks as symbols of rebellion between neighboring nations with poor social-political connections. The fact that both France and Belgium took the accidental movement of the border in comedic stride helps avoid conflict, but there is always the potential for future problems. As much as we like to believe we handle things better than leaders of our past, it is easy to fall into a conflict with other countries regarding borders and civil rights. Rare, 1500-year-old painting of Jesus Christ found in an abandoned church in the Israeli desert. Whether you attend church regularly as a practicing Christian or your views of the religion have been shaped from the media or primary school church visits, Many people have an image as to what Jesus looks like, ingrained in their minds. However, a painting from 1500 years ago may call that image into question. The Western media, in modern society and historically, Jesus Christ is often presented with long hair and a beard, among other traits. However, an early painting discovered in an ancient Israeli church presents a vastly different image. A team of archaeologists from the University of Haifa in Israel stumbled across this painting whilst conducting research in the Negev desert, in the ruins of a Byzantine farming village. Emma Mayan Fenar, an art historian from the university, was present upon the discovery of the church painting. In an interview with Haaretz, an Israeli newspaper, she made this statement. I was there at the right time, at the right place, with the right angle of light, and suddenly I saw eyes, she continues, explaining that the image depicts Jesus at his baptism. Despite the classic Western expectations for Jesus to be portrayed as bearded with long hair, at no point do the Gospels offer a description of Jesus Christ. Furthermore, no known description exists in work developed later on. Instead, this popular image of Jesus, or rather any image seen, is an artistic interpretation and vision. Mayan Fanar said, when speaking to Haaretz, that in the past, Jesus has been shown with many different appearances, long hair, short hair, with a beard, without a beard, to name just a few variations. Apparently, by the 6th century, the image of Christ with long flowing locks and a beard had been shown as the most consistent representation, an image that has continued in Western cultures even into the 21st century. The image found in Israel is not overly clear, with sun exposure having impeded the clarity of the artwork. It holds rough outlines and small smears of colour, though many details have not stood the test of time since its estimated creation in the 6th century. The team of archaeologists say the church's image of Jesus shows him to have short curly hair, a prolonged face, large eyes, and an elongated nose. According to the work published by the team in the journal Antiquity, it was fairly common for Christ to be represented as having short hair throughout Egypt and Syro-Palestine. However, this convention seemingly disappeared from the later Byzantine art. One reason for this is that during the early 8th century, it was outlawed to create religious images. This was one aspect of what would later be named the iconoclastic controversy, in which lots of Christians in the Byzantine Empire considered the creation of religious art equal to the worship of icons. This was illegal and prohibited by Emperor Leo III in 726 AD and remained as such until the mid-9th century. This adds to the value of this discovery, highlighting the rarity of an Israeli depiction of Christ in this time period. 
While we have no answers as to the true appearance of Christ, it certainly is fascinating to understand why certain depictions have arisen and become more popularized, when they may just be deemed less accurate or on par with often unseen interpretations of Jesus. This interesting discovery is certainly an intriguing discussion point into modern understandings of religion. In 2021, a massive object described as a black triangle was seen hovering above a military installation in California. The sighting was documented on six separate videos and witnessed by 50 U.S. Marines. In April 2021, an officer at Camp Wilson in 29 Palms captured an image of a striking object with lights on its sides in the desert mountains. The object, which appeared to be in a triangular shape, remained stationary for 10 minutes, as attested by witnesses. Between 8.24 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., videos captured by several Marines show what appears to be a mysterious object hovering in the dark sky. Many of the Marines believe that the object was a craft based on the lights visible in the footage. At 8.29 p.m., a video captured soldiers firing a flare into the air as an effort to illuminate an object that displayed five red lights. Prior to being fully illuminated, the black triangle abruptly disappeared without leaving any evidence. Shortly after the incident, the military personnel reported that a significant number of trucks and several helicopters immediately headed to the specified site on the base. The helicopters continued to fly over the area until approximately 11.30 p.m. that evening. Witnesses provided a varying range of estimates for the size of the unidentified object, with some stating it was as large as a stealth bomber, having a length of over 170 feet, while others claimed its size to be approximately half that of a football field. Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, respected journalists, have obtained a collection of media that includes six separate film recordings from two distinct viewpoints, along with a related photograph. This material has been made available through their podcast, Weaponized, as part of their latest coverage. A former sergeant by the name of Mr. Mitchell reported that he had served in the United States Army for over a decade, but said that nothing could have prepared him for what he was about to witness. Hearing about this strange object, he went on to detail that he had seen something similar while serving in the United States military. He details that it was a clear evening and the base was relatively calm. He and his fellow soldiers were going about their routine tasks when suddenly a strange object made itself visible over the horizon. As he looked up, all he could see was a massive triangular object hovering silently above the base. He described the craft as having a sleek, metallic exterior and that it was black in color. As the mysterious triangle hovered in the sky, the soldiers around Sergeant Mitchell began to notice it too. Everyone's attention turned towards the sky, and there was a mix of awe, confusion, and a sense that they were witnessing something unknown. Sergeant Mitchell reported that he had heard stories and rumors of unidentified objects, but witnessing one firsthand was an entirely different experience. He couldn't tear his eyes away from the incredible sight unfolding before him. The triangular object remained stationary for a few moments before it suddenly shot across the sky with astonishing speed, disappearing into the night. The soldiers stood there, speechless, trying to comprehend what they had just witnessed. Sergeant Mitchell said that soldiers often report seeing these mysterious triangles and that the event that he witnessed left them with a sense of wonder and a myriad of unanswered questions. As per the footage captured by Marines' smartphone cameras, it seems that there were five lights arranged in a triangular pattern. The event shares similarities with the famous Phoenix Lights incident from 1997, where a massive triangular object was sighted above the city of Phoenix, Arizona. Witnesses, including the governor at the time, reported the incident, saying that the object was able to hover in the sky without making a sound. During the 2021 occurrence, a mortarman stationed at Camp Wilson spoke with Corbell and captured a photo of an object with his smartphone that had high exposure, which displayed the object's outline. The item seems to have a triangular shape, encircled by lights that are equally spaced around its periphery in a pattern resembling the letter V. The individual in charge of operating the mortar, whose identity is being kept secret by news outlets, recounted that one of his associates observed the item manifest out of thin air. He said that a friend of theirs was outside, 
and noticed that lights suddenly appeared in the sky. This intrigued them, and their curiosity led to over 50 people gathering to observe the phenomenon. The lights seemingly emerged out of thin air without any prior warning. Although the Marines had military experience, they were unable to identify the vessel, and their reaction was one of bewilderment. The individual operating the camera, who was in charge of videotaping and capturing images of the entity, remarked that upon close inspection of the visuals, one can easily spot a triangular form painted in black color. The soldier said that based on their photograph featuring a black triangular structure below the lights, it is clear that the object cannot be attributed to any common aerial phenomena, such as flares or illumination rounds. According to the witness, the object in question appeared to remain in the same position for around 10 minutes. A fellow Marine, whose identity has been kept confidential, served as an artilleryman at the base and witnessed the unidentified object. He vehemently denied that the lights could be explained by illumination rounds discharged by artillery or any other ordinary explanation that he may have been familiar with. He described the sighting as an unprecedented event. The object's color, size and illumination greatly varied from anything they've seen before. To illustrate, he mentioned that illumination rounds are typically fired in the air and then dropped, but this object's lighting was distinct. He said that there were five objects grouped together that appeared to have a red hue, while their lighting was a yellow-white shade. The member of the artillery unit analogized the dimensions of the unidentified object to those of a stealth bomber, whereas the individual responsible for operating the mortar system characterized it as comparable to the area covered by a three-bedroom residence. Another observer who conversed with Corbell likened its magnitude to being roughly 50% of that of a typical football pitch. According to witnesses, during the incident, they also observed strange lights moving around the unidentified object, which can be seen in the video, but are not very clear. The Marines captured one of the videos of the object and eventually fired illumination rounds over it. However, prior to the object being illuminated, it abruptly vanished. According to a mortarman's account, he saw two orange-colored lights, which he later identified as illumination rounds, hover above the triangle before it abruptly vanished, leaving the sky pitch black. Shortly after, helicopters swiftly rushed toward the area and began circling it. According to the artilleryman, he observed a fleet of more than 60 military vehicles accompanying the helicopters on their journey to the site. They said that following the event, helicopters were observed flying in circular patterns for a considerable amount of time, alongside a large convoy of around 60 trucks. According to Corbell's conversation with the experienced mortarman, the unidentified object sighted by the latter was not connected to the United States military in any way. The government conducted a search after the object vanished, implying a certain level of interest. This expansive road materialized along the coastline of Sakhalin Island. The mysterious photographs quickly led to the emergence of various theories regarding a potential lost civilization. A massive stone road suddenly appeared on the shores of Sakhalin Island. Although it was only visible for a brief period of time, it attracted enough attention for hundreds of photographs to be captured. The unexpected appearance startled the residents of the island, and many of them said that the mysterious road appeared out of nowhere. Sakhalin Island is situated in the Ring of Fire, an area renowned for its significant subduction zones, this accounts for the frequent occurrence of intense seismic and volcanic activity on the island. It shares its southern border with Japanese islands. It is important to note that certain individuals who question the origin of these enigmatic structures argue that a natural cause is the most plausible explanation. However, it should be acknowledged that while this explanation may account for their formation, it does not provide insight into their actual creation. The massive road can be observed to bear a striking resemblance to those constructed by ancient civilizations. But it has been noticeably weathered by the relentless force of the sea. Therefore, numerous individuals have expressed the desire for a comprehensive geological or archaeological examination to be conducted on this enigmatic formation. It is important to mention that in close proximity to that location, along the coast of Japan, there exist enigmatic underwater structures known as Yonaguni. Various researchers have suggested that these submerged structures 
are associated with the mysterious civilization known as Mu. The expansive highway running along the coastline of Sakhalin bears a striking resemblance to the well-known Bimini Road, which is believed to be the remnants of the mythical Atlantis discovered in the Caribbean Sea. The colossal highway remains shrouded in mystery, with limited information available regarding its nature, except for its remarkable and transitory existence. The allure of the oceans has always captivated human imagination, offering sustenance, exploration and trade routes to countless civilizations throughout history. However, beneath the depths lies a profound mystery. The ocean's relentless advance has claimed numerous ancient civilizations, swallowing their cities, cultures and stories into its abyss. The history of humanity is replete with examples of thriving civilizations that flourished along coastlines, deltas and rivers, only to be engulfed by the rising tides. The lost city of Atlantis, a legendary civilization described by Plato, has intrigued scholars for centuries. Although its existence remains disputed, the narrative underscores the fascination with the concept of a magnificent civilization consumed by the sea. Natural disasters, shifting tectonic plates and rising sea levels have all played pivotal roles in the submersion of ancient civilizations. The destruction wrought by earthquakes and tsunamis can erase entire coastal communities from the face of the earth. The Minoan civilization, centered on the island of Crete, is an illustrative example. Around 1600 BCE, the cataclysmic eruption of the Thera volcano generated tsunamis that devastated Minoan settlements and contributed to the civilization's decline. Additionally, the inexorable rise of sea levels due to melting ice caps and climate change poses a contemporary threat. The sunken city of Pavlopetri, located off the coast of Greece, serves as a stark reminder of this phenomenon. Submerged around 1000 BCE, the ruins offer insights into early urban planning and societal organization, while also sounding a warning about the environmental challenges faced by modern coastal communities. The stories of these submerged civilizations resonate with profound lessons that extend beyond their historical contexts. They underscore the impermanence of human achievements and the vulnerability of even the most advanced societies in the face of natural forces. The oceans, which once nurtured and sustained these civilizations, now serve as repositories of their memory, reminding us of the transitory nature of human endeavors. Advancements in technology have revolutionized our ability to explore and document the submerged remnants of ancient civilizations. Underwater archaeology, remote sensing techniques, and robotic exploration tools have allowed researchers to delve into the depths and unearth treasures hidden beneath the waves. These discoveries enrich our understanding of history and culture, while offering opportunities for interdisciplinary collaboration between archaeologists, oceanographers, and environmental scientists. Across cultures and civilizations, tales of a catastrophic deluge have been woven into the fabric of human history, leaving an indelible mark on our collective consciousness. From the Epic of Gilgamesh, to the biblical story of Noah's Ark, the theme of a great flood that engulfs the world and reshapes humanity's destiny, transcends time and geography. The great flood narrative is not confined to a single culture. Instead, it emerges as a universal motif that spans the globe. The Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the earliest known works of literature from ancient Mesopotamia, recounts the story of a catastrophic flood, unleashed by the gods, to punish humanity's transgressions. The tale of Utnapishtim, a survivor of the flood, mirrors the biblical account of Noah's Ark, where a chosen family and pairs of animals are saved from the waters. In Indian mythology, the Matsya Purana recounts the story of King Manu, who is warned of an impending flood by a fish, which later transforms into a giant fish to save him and the world's creatures. Similarly, in the Native American tradition, the Hopi people share stories of the Great Deluge describing how they were led to safety on the back of a turtle. These diverse flood narratives reflect the human impulse to grapple with questions of mortality, divine intervention, and the cyclical nature of existence. The universality of the theme suggests that, despite vast geographical distances and cultural differences, societies sought to explain the unfathomable forces of nature and their own place within the cosmos. The Great Flood narrative often serves as a moral lesson, 
reminding humanity of the consequences of hubris and the need for humility and respect for the natural world. It encapsulates a collective fear of the uncontrollable, a reverence for the power of the elements, and a desire for salvation and renewal. While the Great Flood narrative is deeply rooted in mythology and cultural memory, scientific investigations have sought to uncover the kernels of truth that might underlie these stories. Geological evidence suggests that catastrophic floods did occur in various regions throughout history, often resulting from the melting of glaciers, the collapse of natural dams, or tsunamis triggered by seismic events. One of the most notable examples is the flooding of the Black Sea around 7,000 years ago, which may have inspired some of the flood narratives in the region. The Mediterranean Sea once breached the natural barrier, inundating the basin and creating a dramatic flood that could have been etched into local memory and passed down through generations. The Great Flood narrative continues to resonate in modern times, offering insights into the human capacity to grapple with uncertainty and change. These narratives also prompt us to consider the ethical and moral dimensions of our relationship with the environment. They encourage us to reflect on our responsibility as stewards of the earth and the consequences of heedless exploitation of natural resources. The recurring motif of a catastrophic deluge transcends time and geography, permeating the myths and legends of numerous ancient civilizations. The Great Flood narrative holds a profound cultural significance, often serving as a foundation for a civilization's creation myths and religious beliefs. Many ancient societies attached divine meaning to the concept of a flood, using it as a backdrop to explain the origins of humanity, the gods' interactions with mortals, and the cyclical nature of life and death. The universality of the flood narrative could stem from a shared human experience of facing natural calamities, creating an empathetic bridge across cultures. Floods are among the most devastating of natural disasters, leaving a lasting imprint on societies that experienced them. The documentation of the Great Flood may have been a way for ancient civilizations to cope with the fear and trauma associated with such events by imbuing them with meaning and purpose. The documentation of the Great Flood could also be rooted in the environmental realities faced by these civilizations. Many ancient settlements were situated near rivers, lakes or coastlines, making them vulnerable to flooding. As communities were periodically ravaged by deluges, the experiences of witnessing the destruction and struggling for survival would have etched themselves into the collective memory. Over time, these experiences might have been elaborated upon and integrated into cultural narratives, serving as cautionary tales that reinforce the importance of respecting natural boundaries. The documentation of the Great Flood by so many ancient civilizations offers a window into the intricate interplay of culture, psychology, environment, and shared experience. The universality of the flood narrative demonstrates the profound ways in which humans grapple with the mysteries of existence, our relationship with nature, and the enduring quest for meaning in a complex and unpredictable world. The tapestry of human history is a rich and intricate narrative that spans millennia, shaping the course of civilization as we know it. However, a staggering revelation casts a shadow over our understanding of the past. Approximately 98% of human history remains shrouded in obscurity, hidden beneath the veil of time. The vast majority of human history rests in the realm of the unknown, existing only as fragmented whispers in the archaeological record and speculative theories. Our comprehension of the ancient world is primarily derived from artifacts, ruins and inscriptions, but these remnants often offer mere glimpses into the cultures, societies and events that defined the lives of our distant ancestors. The scarcity of written records, the perishable nature of materials, and the ravages of time have collectively conspired to obscure the intricate narratives of countless civilizations. Several factors contribute to the immense historical gaps that mark our understanding of the past. One of the most significant challenges lies in the lack of written records from pre-literate societies. In the absence of written language, societies relied on oral traditions to pass down their knowledge and stories, leaving little trace for modern historians to decipher. Moreover, the materials used for early writing were often perishable, such as papyrus or wood, rendering them susceptible to decay over time. Natural disasters and conflict have also played a pivotal role in erasing entire chapters of human history. 
Cataclysmic events like volcanic eruptions, earthquakes and floods have submerged ancient settlements and destroyed valuable records. Additionally, the deliberate destruction of cultural heritage during times of conflict or conquest has further contributed to the loss of historical knowledge. The scarcity of historical information carries profound implications for our understanding of human development, societal evolution and cultural dynamics. The missing epochs leave us bereft of insights into the complexities of governance, technology, belief systems and artistic expression that shaped the trajectory of humanity. The lost civilizations could hold the keys to understanding the roots of modern societal challenges and the solutions that were developed and subsequently forgotten. Furthermore, the absence of this vast historical wealth deprives us of a sense of continuity and connection with our distant past. It is akin to a jigsaw puzzle with innumerable missing pieces, leaving gaps in our collective identity and understanding of where we come from. So, what do you make of this mysterious discovery? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.